Cincinnati, it's your turn on talk now. How you doing? Uh, fine, Bruce. Uh, good to hear from you. I uh, listen to your program quite extensively, and you impress me of having a great deal of knowledge well, pertaining to many subjects. A little bit about a lot of things. So the song went? Well, I have a situation I've been debating on for three months. There's a company that wants to charge me a fee to promote an item that I have. Let's back up a little bit. Tell me a little bit of what you got in mind. I do architectural woodwork. Architectural um, woodwork? What does that mean? I, I make curved moldings uh, and all kinds of uh, inside uh, interior trim, exterior trim. Hmm, I, don't, I don't make anything you can buy. And I, well, you mean you mean you that nobody else sells the same product? I can certainly buy it from you, can I? Yes. Okay. All right. You you make these are all custom jobs then. Correct. I want to build a circular staircase, for example, maybe. Correct. And you'd be able to put all the okay now. Now the how, well, hold on now. Just how do you sell the? You've been doing this for time for some time. Yes. How do you up until now? How have you sold your service or your product? Uh. Word of mouth. I mean, but and two, well, two cards, business cards. Well, but I'm getting at is it is it generally to an architect? Is it generally to a builder, or do you go to the end user and they they buy your service, or is it some combination of thereof? Well, it's a combination. My work goes. Uh, I do some work for uh, uh, lumber companies that mm -hmm. don't have a mill. Uh, contractors that uh, don't know where to go to get a particular job done. Okay. Now, you've come across somebody who's going to sell you, is going to promote this thing? Uh, what, the, what I did, I came up with an idea on how to do a particular job. Can you tell me what the job is? Yes. This, this particular um, apparatus I have, I can make cut curves. Uh, I can cut inside radius, uh, outside radius, mm -hmm. and I can repeat these dimensions in a matter of seconds. Hmm. And uh, even though you've invented a machine of some kind, well, yes. All right, now you said something you've been debating because somebody wants to help you promote this. Now, let me—if I'm wrong, so I hope I'm wrong. Did you answer one of these ads about inventors? Yes. Help out, we'll help you and all that sort of jazz. Yes, and I'll tell you why. Well, I, I, I went to a patent attorney. Yeah. The only thing he could do for me was to research this uh, uh, piece of equipment yeah. and get a patent on it, and that was the end of it. Well, that's what his job is. Well, I don't want to manufacture anything. Yeah, but what you... All right, go ahead. So, uh, I heard on the air yeah, one of these companies yeah. that will... Uh, research it, and I paid them seven hundred dollars. You paid them already? I paid them seven hundred dollars oh, to sweet research. God, now they want about twenty eight hundred to continue. Well, they want a little more than that. Thirty five hundred. They want five thousand. Forget you've been. You've already been suckered for seven hundred. Yes. You've thrown seven. Well, I mean, yes. You, if you went to your garbage disposal <laughs> and you took seven one hundred dollar bills and dropped them down the garbage disposal, well, you'd that's... be no worse off than you are right now. I I have uh, come up with numerous ideas. Oh, hold it. Have you heard I'll... what I said? Pardon? If, if, did, you just, did you hear what I just got through saying to you? Well, I'm, repeat it. If you went into your garbage disposal, do you have a garbage disposal in your yes, home? Yes, sir. If you took seven $100 bills and you turned the water on full blast and dropped them down one at a time and listened to them grind up, you would be no worse off than you are right now. I won't dispute your word. Well, I'm telling you. <laughs> now, you want to drop 5,000 more in the garbage disposal? I'll come watch. That's what it comes down to. Uh, one of the government agencies, and I'm trying to think which one, and I got it somewhere in our files, did something on the order of 80,000 people like you. They researched, and they couldn't find one they helped. Well, I checked with the Better Business Bureau. Oh, and, boy. And, yeah. And they, they didn't have any uh, record of the, any... Uh, complaints. Complaints. That's terrific. 
Now they want they want five thousand dollars and they want ten percent. You want to believe, don't you? Well, you're like the guy who goes to a religious shrine with an incurable disease, and I can understand that you're desperate. You want to believe that that's going to work, and maybe it will sometimes. But this is not a religious experience. Now, do you want to be five thousand dollars poorer than you are now? I don't have that kind of money. I'm I ask you a simple question. Do you want to be no. five thousand? Then don't do it. You're being suckered. Well, I don't know how to put it more clearly. Well, I, I understand you're loud and clear. Okay. Now, do you have any suggestions on how I could go about this? Unfortunately, you got to spend a ton of money. That's the problem. Your patent attorney told you exactly what you didn't want to hear. you got to spend money for a patent to protect your product. Well, he agreed to uh, uh, research this. and get I understand that. That's He did a, what's called a search yeah. to see if the item is, in fact, patentable and not patented by someone else. Well, this company that I went through reported back to me that uh, they had made a research oh, on it, boy. and it was patentable. You, wanna, you just want to believe, man. Well, you want to throw down your crutches and run the marathon. I am telling you, you've been suckered. Now, I don't know. I don't want to tell you that. That's the reason I called you, You Bruce. have been screwed. <laughs> now, the only question is, do you want to throw another five Gs away? Not to this organization. Or to any other. Now, if, you, you, if, you, if you're prepared to back your idea you've, and you want to protect it, you've got to go to a patent attorney or walk it through the process yourself, which can be done, although it's very difficult. Then you got to talk about having it manufactured and marketed. There is no shortcut. Well, that's the reason I went to these people. But that's they... right, because they promise you all... Oh, boy. Yes, yes. They promise you the moon. But they guarantee nothing. That's right. That's right. And they pick on people like you. And that's what gets me so damn ticked off. Because you got an idea. You believe in it. I understand that because I've had ideas that I believe in. And they capitalize on your enthusiasm. It stinks. Well, my idea works. I made. Oh, I didn't say it didn't work. I'm saying it's not going to work with these companies. That's all I'm telling you. Uh huh. Got to got to let you go, my friend. I understand. I do wish you well, but save your money, please. Oh, well, thank you, Bruce. Okay, guy. I sympathize. I feel for the guy, but these outfits they capitalize on this stuff. I'm Bruce Williams. This is Talk. Man. One eight hundred seven four three eight thousand. We go to Boise, Idaho. Your turn on TalkNet. Hello there. Hello, Bruce. Uh, uh, don't you feel sorry for a guy like that? I, I do. I really do. Yeah. I knew it was coming. I could hear it coming. I've That's heard you sure. talk to people like that before, and and it's really sad because uh, they just... Oh, they man. take advantage of the people that can least afford to be taken advantage of. Anyway, what's on your mind? Oh, I've been listening to you ever since you came on national radio, Bruce, and what? I'm not any better looking. I'm not, my love life isn't any better. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> but well, I think I'm a little smarter. <laughs> well, I don't know about the third, but I, I'm holding hands with you in the first two departments. Oh, uh, incidentally, boy. incidentally, the fella, uh, caller uh, a couple of calls ago about the adjustable rate mortgage. Yeah. Uh, any good spreadsheet program will take care of him. Uh -huh. uh, you can get Microsoft Excel or Lotus One Two Three or something like that, and and uh, five or ten minutes he can write a program that'll take care of all that. Well, he certainly doesn't have to spend a hundred bucks to smash for it. Well, they're a little more than that. <clears throat> no, I'm talking about he was going to take the information, and each time they ran it for him it was going to cost him a hundred dollars to smash. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. Like well, for first. three or four hundred dollars he can write a program that'll uh, do it himself. Take, take it about ten minutes and he'll be done. There you go. Uh, Bruce, about three or four weeks ago, you had a caller, a young woman who uh, uh, took her computer in to get it worked on. I don't know if you recall the, the Go ahead, conversation. Joel, refresh my memory. Uh, she had some programs that she lost because the hard disk, uh, probably the file allocation table went bad. Don't start talking. That <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't talk dirty on this show. Uh, it's a little like the decimal or Dewey decimal system in a library. It's a reference system that the I, didn't under, I didn't understand that either. Okay. Now, you, now you're really now you're really now you're really socking it for me. Sorry. Anyway, she had some programs that a friend of hers put on the computer. Yeah. And uh, she lost the programs because the hard disk failed. Uh huh. And essentially, what she did was misappropriate software. 
you told her, or I think she was going to go uh, 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 have somebody work on the on the computer, and and she was uh, going to. Uh, well, what were you going to do this? Because I don't, you know, I don't understand computers as you well. You're know. right. Well, she was going to have a, a, a small claims action because of the software she lost in. Bruce, uh, I'm in the business, and I deal with this on an ongoing basis every day, and she didn't lose anything. If she owned the programs, you, once the hard disk is, is back where it's supposed to be, you can put the programs right back on. So essentially what she did was like going to the library. Oh, you, are you telling me she had a bootleg program? Is that's that exactly what she had, yeah. How do, how, do you, I'm just, how do you know that from her conversation? Because she lost the program. She didn't She didn't have... If you buy the programs, you go to the store... You're telling me if, if, if it was done by the manufacturer then this this would not have caused the programs to go away is that what you're saying yeah essentially what happens is the uh, the disk system loses reference to the right, to i want the you program. to hold on we'll go in the corner and maybe you can explain it more more fully to me I will explain it. this is talk now. I'm chatting with a gentleman in Boise, Idaho. Uh, he's telling me that we had a previous caller who, for some reason, some information on her computer got wiped out. And if you're saying if the information was hers legitimately, it wouldn't have gotten wiped. I mean, don't go through the technical explanation because it's going to go zing and run right over my head. Right. What you're saying is if, if she had the legitimate program, it would not have been wiped out. Is that what you're saying? No, it would have been wiped out, but she could reinstall it. What does that mean? Uh, it just takes a few minutes to install a, a software program on any computer, and if you own the programs, you can install it a hundred times if you need to. If it gets lost, and it happens occasionally. Okay. Well, I'll, uh, look, I, I, I don't mean to cut you short. Yeah. You know. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's why I employ people who are smarter than me. And what, we have what? a half a dozen computers that I own, or companies I own <laughs> own computers. I don't. They're in the attack mode when I go in the office. <laughs> Everybody has. You know, I was in my office in Florida here. Well, I commute. You know, back and forth now, right? And my office down there is is fairly modern. I mean, we have you know th we we aren't even using the mimeograph anymore. We have a copy machine. You know, we're we're upscale, right? Every young lady who works there has one of these things on their desk, right? Okay. There's, there's yeah. one desk with no computer on it. <laughs> Guess who's? I understand. Guess who's? So don't <laughs> dazzle me with all this talk. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, it's a little bit like if she went to the library and took... I don't even want to hear it. I didn't took, understand the Dewey Decimal System either. Well, if she took 10 or 20 books and, and then the library came and got them, she was going to sue the library for taking her book. Okay. I'll about accept. the same thing. I'll so. accept <laughs> it. Don't beat it to death. I'm just... <laughs> okay. Bruce, uh, my problem that I called about is I have a young fellow working for me who was a little bit over enthusiastic in the sales department uh -huh. and he sold some equipment to an outfit in Belgium uh -huh. uh, happened about a year and a half ago and the amount was about $16,000 now we've been doing business with this outfit on an ongoing basis for a couple of years and we re usually required payment up front yeah, and why? we ship the equipment why was that? Uh, because of the the uh, uh, just the physical uh, location. Uh, How about a letter of credit? Uh, well, they prefer to do it that way. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. a letter of credit would be the the uh, customary way to do business with, a, with somebody in a foreign jurisdiction, where clearly the uh, uh, your legal um, redress is is diminished, particularly when you don't get when you're dealing in small numbers. Now, 16k is not small, but it's not large either in terms of, of international commerce. Which seemed to me that's why letters of credit are existed, isn't it? Oh yeah, absolutely, and and that would have been an ideal way to have done this, and I wish we had. Well, what you're telling me is this guy sold him the stuff, and made him pay. That's what you're coming to, I think. No, he sold him the stuff, and he never paid. The guy never paid him. He never paid anybody. <laughs> well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, I'm maybe the he's. Or we're getting too many he's here. Okay. Your your salesperson sold this company some merchandise the company has yet to pay you is that that's accurate? exactly that's exactly right well that's it how much money is involved well sixteen thousand plus okay. interest uh, well all right now the uh this is hard goods not services right well and this company's where in brussels well then you're gonna have to hire yourself an attorney in brussels to go after him i mean you're, you're clearly not gonna do it from boise no that's for sure 
I've. Uh, is there any reason why they're not paying if they're ignoring you? Well, they say that they, in turn, resold the equipment and they have been paid. That's not your problem. No, I... Uh, Although I, it is your problem, it's not your problem. I've been uh, communicating with them uh, for the last year and a half, yeah. until the last couple of months, and now they aren't even uh, returning my phone calls or answering yourself. faxes Look, and so have, forth. Do you have an attorney in Boise? Yes, sir. Well, I'm absolutely confident that he can arrange for representation in... in uh, in Belgium, okay, that's what you do. I mean, this put it. You, you, this is not your bag, nor would it be mine. You, but, and you can't do it long range. You can't do it on, on a fax machine. You got to have somebody on site there. I've uh, waited to. Uh, <laughs> well, I think <laughs> to find far, out how this was going to come down. Well, but, I think uh, you've been far too patient. I've talked to a collection agency, and they said they can't handle it. I hadn't really thought about an attorney until the last week or two, but well, I thought I'd ask your advice. Well, I would call my attorney, and I'm confident there's a re an international referral service of some nature. Uh, it may be, do you deal with a decent-sized bank? Yes. Then your bank has a correspondent bank in, uh, where would you say this was? In Brussels. In Brussels. Your bank, in, in all likelihood, has a correspondent bank in Brussels. Okay. They, in turn, might be able to refer an attorney to you. I think that sounds like a, a, the, the proper plan. I, uh, I've got to do something about this. I can't just write it off. Well, I wouldn't write it off. And furthermore, you got to do. You can't even write it off <laughs> unless you do something about it. In the, my own mind. And, no, no. But, I mean, the IRS yeah. will not let you write it off. Right. Until you've made uh, a strong effort to collect. So even even if you if there's no chance of collecting, you still got to make the effort in order to charge it off. Is that not true? That's very true. Well, and get to it, Tiger. Okay. Thanks All righty. <laughs> hey, thanks Keep for your call. The, oh, sorry I confused you, but I, I, I love oh. your show, and, and I was hoping we could get a little bit of that straight now because I deal with that kind of a problem yeah. every day. Unfortunately, you see, I have never reached a higher level of confusion. <laughs> if, I, if, if I improve <laughs> terrifically, I'll be confused. I wish you well, kid. I'm Bruce Williams. This is TalkNet. Peoria, Illinois. Hello there. Hi, Bruce. Hello. And how are you? I am well, thank you. Well, good. I have a very small problem, I guess. Uh, I had a friend that died, and uh, he has no will. He had nothing. I received right. this well, check. He, he, died, he died in test state. Right. Okay. So I received this check. A right. check from? From an insurance company. Yeah. $192. Yeah, hundred and ninety-two dollars. Yeah. What do you, when you say an insurance company? You talking about a life company, an accident company? A, well, it was, he was in the hospital for a couple of weeks. All right. So he got, I guess, sixty dollars a day. But it says state of him and care of me. Now he owes thousands of dollars. Am I able to cash this check? No, ma'am. It's made out to him, right? right. Well, it's in, yes, in care of me. It's, no, but it's made out to him. Pay to state, the yes. Pay to the order of right. Yes. John Jones. Estate of, yes. Pardon me? Estate of but him. You, but you have no standing in this, do no. you? No. No, you may not cash that. Yeah, I'm not next to kin or anything. Well, though. even if you were next to kin, you couldn't cash it. Yes. The but I wrote estate of well, no, well, but First of all, nobody's going to honor that check because that check would have to be deposited in an estate account. Right. Well, that's the answer to that. It's got to go to, if, if there's an administr... If the, he said he didn't die with a will, so... No, if, there's did, no one. Hold it, slow down. Okay. Did he have any assets of any kind? Well, he had a, a life insurance policy, I guess. And, and who was the beneficiary of the life insurance policy? Well, a sister-in-law. Well, then she gets that. She will get this one, too? No, no. I asked if she had any assets, and you said a life insurance policy. That's what, all he had. That's all. Uh-huh. Then it would probably not even pay... To have anybody become the administrator of his estate, all you got is bills and no nothing to pay him with, right? right? Who who buried him? Uh, the county, I guess. Okay, I just send the check back to the company. Send it back to the insurance. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you much. You're very welcome. Bye bye. Now that she has no standing in that matter and has no right to cash it, no right to cash it. Let's go to Hood River, Oregon. Hello there. Welcome to Talk Net. Hi, how are you? I am just fine, baby. What's on your mind? Well, I probably was pretty stupid. Um, well, let me tell you something. What? I could out-stupid you any time. <laughs> Great. So don't, don't worry about it. What did you do? Um, well, I own a, a child care center. I'm Actually, I'm a partner 
in a child care center. We've been in business for about three years. Uh -huh. How many kids? Um, 124. Yeah, you're a pretty good size operation. Yeah, it's pretty big. Um, we are not, neither my partner and I are financial wizards by any means, but we really do good child care. All right, I then mean, maybe you need a business manager then. Yeah, and we, and we finally got one, but okay. we got nailed. Um, what has happened is we had a, a family that had an outstanding balance. Um, it is at, right now at $1,160. How much is that a month? Um, well, we charge 240 a month for a full-time child. This so. is one child? This is one child, and so this is like five, five months. Yeah. And, a, little um, less, a little less than five months. Yeah, and we really worked with them. They were having difficulty making the payment. The dad was filing a workman's comp claim. Okay, well, let's see. You're compassionate. Now you're stuck. Right. Well, so what we did is we finally in December said, I'm sorry, your son can't come anymore. You know, we need, at least we need you to make payments or something on this. Yeah. And they just kind of gave us a runaround. Okay. So we finally went and filed a small claim. Mm -hmm. Well... Um, I filed that on the 4th of February, and the, the, the father contacted me on the 13th of February and kind of said to me, ha, 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 I filed bankruptcy the day before you filed your small claim, so Wouldn't you're not going to get anything. After. Okay. You probably won't then. He filed, child. he filed a Chapter 7. Well, that's absolute bankruptcy. Did he list you? Um, yes, he did list us as a debtor. Well, you're out of business, kid. That's what I thought. Now, I have one more question. Someone told me, now, he owns a business in town. And and when we filed the small claim, we included the name of the business on the on the small claim stuff. How did you do that? Um, I don't. The courthouse just told me to do that. <laughs> and did you get the judgment? Um, no, because it, we haven't heard yet from the courthouse what's going to happen. Well, you, the, there's no point in the judgment against him at this point if he named you as a as a um, a debtor, a creditor, a creditor. Yeah. Because. Uh, it's going to get discharged. Goodbye. Now, it, but if he's if he owns a business, is he supposed to still be continuing to I, operate I, that? I, I have no way of knowing how he, you say he owns it. You're not sure of that, really. No, I do know he owns a business. How do you know that? Because his name... He that doesn't mean a name. thing. It doesn't mean a thing. Oh, okay. Somebody else may own it. You see, oh. I, that's what I'm trying to get. I'm not trying to give you a bad time. Uh -huh. You know, it may, it, there's many... many. I can think of one guy. Always, the, you, how old are you? I'm 33. You never heard of this guy. He was dead before you were born. <laughs> but he was an extremely well-known person all around America. Uh-huh. And he didn't own a thing. Oh, really? But his name was on everything. Yeah. On hotels. and He didn't own anything. He was just a, a front man. Well, now, this wi his wife operates this business. That may be, but it may not it's be that he, he doesn't own and, there, and it may be so far in hock it wouldn't matter. Uh-huh. You see what I'm getting to? Now, should we go to the, the bankruptcy hearing? No. It's coming. We it's were a waste notified. of time. It's a waste of time. It is. Yes, ma'am. You're going to be discharged. Yeah. We're not getting anything. You're not going to get anything. <laughs> okay. Let me, you know, you, you were in the... How old are you? Just, how do you how 33. 33. This, this makes me sick to my stomach, you say. It, you, it's... Well, no, no, I want you to hear me out. Okay. Because, because you could have been one of... Matter of fact, you'd have been a little young to get into my school. Uh-huh. I used to own a nursery school. Did you really? We had 400 kids. Wow. Started with nine. That's great. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> That's another program. That's a lot of but kids. We started with nine kids. Well, we and we charged sixty-five bucks a month. Wow! And five bucks for round-trip transportation per month. That's great. <laughs> that wasn't great. Yeah. It's just the dollar. I'm just. It's, I'm just thinking about the difference. When I, you know, I was there fourteen years. Yeah. And at the end, it was a bit more than that. Although nothing like the numbers you're talking about. Right. But the point is that I, we started that on September the eighteenth, nineteen sixty-one, with as I said, nine children and no money. That's exactly what we did. It was a different world then. Yeah, we started with five children and no money. And right. um, and it, we've been in business for almost three years now. Sounds like you're doing great. Well, we work hard, but this okay. is this makes me angry when things like this happen. It happens. It's part of doing, but you said in somewhere in your conversation that you're not business oriented. And that's right. okay. Uh, not too many educators are. And that's right. why you have a business partner and you have a, uh, an education partner. Uh-huh. But the, um, the hard facts are that you got to factor in. Uh, unpaid bills. It just right. It just happens. Yeah. And don't want to get to you. Put it behind you. That's what we're but trying don't, to do. Don't, but don't be quite as compassionate next, next I time. Think but, that's the you know, real problem. But here's the problem. You know, here's me. Do as I do. No, do as I say. Don't do as I do. Because I, I do the same thing you did. Yeah. I get stupid. Oh, don't worry about it all. You can, I'll let you hang. You know, don't pay the rent. I mean, I know it's tough. 
and then the bank comes to me. That's exactly so, what uh, happens. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm a lousy landlord. I've said this many times, and I'm, I'm, unfortunately in business I have let things slide because somebody's having a bad time, which is okay if you can afford it, but uh, you really cannot. Yeah. Don't want to get to you. Well, thank you for your advice. I wish you well, sweetheart. Okay, bye-bye. That kid, she could have been a kid. She probably wasn't even trained when I started the nursery. Oh, my goodness gracious. How time flies. Oh, this is my anniversary, too. I, my, my son says to me, how do you remember all these anniversaries? But I had a, you know, important, I'm not even getting into what it was, but important things in my life. And this was another one today. All these little dates flashing through your mind. Look at the count. Today, something happened on this day some years ago. And all of a sudden, you remember. I'm Bruce Williams. This is TalkNet. Kansas City, Missouri. It's your turn on TalkNet. Welcome. Hi. Hello there. I'm a little nervous and I'm angry of what I believe is happening to me. Well, I didn't do it. I promise. <laughs> Wasn't me. I realize me. that. <laughs> All right. What's on your mind? Well, I entered into a part a real estate general partnership in 1980. General? Can you yes. be, can you tell what you're talking? Because that I have a feeling we may be in this have a semantics problem here. What are you talking about? Well, uh, that's what my contract says is a general partnership agreement with whereby we bought well with. Originally, it was like uh, 10 other partners, and now I believe we're up to about 14 partners. And who is the... Is this a... a, a no, wait a minute, I'm, I'm confused. Could it be a limited partnership, maybe? Uh, yes, I understand that it's limited. Now, in other words, you are a limited partner. Uh-huh, we have... Uh, You're, no, wait a minute. Are you a limited partner or a general partner? Let me put it oh, this I, way. Okay, I'm a limited yeah, partner that's in a that I have a percentage. That's a different matter, you see. You said a general partnership. Well, my my agreement says that yeah, but the partnership. Oh, okay, but the difference is that a general partner, the way well, at least you inferred and maybe didn't mean to, okay, that you were the general partner with the responsibility. A limited partner just puts up dough and is pretty much the mercy of the general partner. Right. Okay. okay. So how right. how long ago was this? 1980. Oh well, then. Uh, ho, ho, ho. It was to be sold. Now it, it was to be sold in five to eight years. That was the. That was the game. That was the game plan. Well, that was the verbal game plan. Right. Now that things are occurring, I'm going back and reading. I mean, you know, really delving into this agreement, and mm -hmm. I find that the date is December 31st, 2020. <laughs> yeah. Among a bunch of other things. Well, they, that, that that in itself does not constitute fraud or anything. Okay, but it's, the what you're saying, a general partner, the man who set this all up, who set this partnership up yeah. uh, talked to each one of us and said that he was a partner and because he was a partner and because he knew all the circumstances of the property and you know all the he I mean, gave us this great sales pitch that he would handle everything yeah, well, that's what the general partner is for okay and, and the limited partners put up the money and they share in the in the rewards if there are any rewards but they are limited in their losses to that amount of money which they're, they're five, ten thousand, 10000 whatever it is they put up. All right. Now, that was all well and good. However, there's been things that have occur occurred with this partnership that the partners have not been aware of. Such as? Uh, death, whereby we, we were to uh, be offered an option to purchase. Um, the, the general partner is has not been a, a general partner, has not been a partner in this for six years. He sold that as interest? Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. And we've not been told that. Mm -hmm. And he has continued for this six years to be our general partner, acting our general partner. And now what do you mean in terms of the administration of this mess? Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, now, uh, in January, he sent us a letter or, or had the attorney send us a letter asking us, for a consent, let me get the word right, mm -hmm. consent uh, to granting of an option. A consent to granting of option, okay, to another group mm -hmm. that, through my investigation, I believe he is He's set running up, up yeah. <laughs> How many? How many? Right, let me. I, I got to cut you loose here, lady. Uh, how uh, many? No, listen to me. How many other limited partners are there that you know of? There's about fourteen that All I know right. of. Have you guys sat down by yourselves and discussed how much? You, how much did you each chuck into this thing? Well, the most that we've put is fifty thousand each. 
but that not everybody has that amount. All right. Have the, have you guys sat down among yourselves and discussed the viability of hiring an attorney to represent you? We have. There's about five of us that have met. Have you discussed the possibility of starting an action, and each of you? contributing to this rather than each of you trying to have your own representation because there's just going to be a, a redundancy of effort if you do that okay no we actually have not well, you done ought that. to you ought to you should have done that a long time ago you do see this as a yes, yes ma'am i mean i don't know if there's anything to salvage here i don't know well see what he's telling us or, and what this new group is telling us it, it's like they're buying time they got this option for 12 months mm -hmm. i mean you know, see there's no point in us discussing the okay. issue here okay because you you believe that it is a a scam. I don't know. No, no, you're putting words in my mouth. <laughs> I don't like that very much. No, I don't know that. I don't know that. It's, it it has a, a, a an, an odor to it from what you're telling me, but I'm only hearing what you have to say. Right. But if I had 50 grand, or there's five of you that have 50 grand, a quarter million dollars tied up, it's certainly worth a few thousand dollars to find someone to go in and, and make the appropriate inquiries, which is going to cost you some money and demand the appropriate answers and if it's necessary to go to court to get those answers okay all right and I, and I would be sitting down with them and, and as i said each of you could go your own way but that would be there would be a tremendous duplication of effort there wouldn't there yeah I mean, your guy would be asking the same question that my guys and sheila guys question to ask well, why would you do that doesn't make any sense well, you know, it's like the man that call, that called earlier about and talked with you about uh, the the patent. Mm -hmm. See, this man and this other group is telling us that they're going to sell this thing for us, and so we're hoping. Well, you know? your hoping is terrific. Yeah, that's why I'm suggesting, and I got to let you go. Okay. That you all sit down. You are all uncomfortable with your investment. I think that's a fair assessment. Yes. Then you'd be better off to hire an independent counsel to go in and dig into this thing and come back and say, yeah, these guys are legit. Yeah, they're screwing you. Yeah, they're violating the law. Yeah, they're within their rights to do what they're doing. None of these things you can say definitively now are happening or not happening. Is that not true? Um... Uh... To it's, some degree. No, not to some degree. Would you bet your life that you could answer any one of those questions accurately? Your life. No. But stop right there. That's okay. why I say you have to have somebody go and look for the information. What about an attorney general? Nope. No. You're looking to get off cheap. Okay. No, you got to hire somebody, honey. Okay. I do wish you well. I appreciate the it. The attorney general gets in if you could demonstrate something that's been unlawful. You haven't done that yet. This is talk now. Dayton, Ohio, we have about, oh, a minute and a half to spend together. Let's do it wisely. I took a trip last summer on used a national credit card to build a trip. I have not been able to get them to send me a bill. Who? You say not them. What do you mean With them? the travel agency. Well, they haven't sent you a bill. No. Did you, did you, well, hold it. Did you notify them that you had not received the bill? Yes. That's the, your, your obligations are over. I know, but I feel guilty. Well, if they feel guilty, I'll notify them again. I did three times. In that right. case, I think you've done what but, more than is expected of most people. Unfortunately, the, we're dealing with clerks in offices, and they claim they got their money. They, they're indifferent to, to the bank that they turn the credit forward, forward the credit to. Well, it's pro how much money are we talking about? Over $1,700. You know what the problem may be, seriously? It would cost more money on the part of the processing bank for that credit card to find the paperwork then it's worth. But there's probably is something mixed up because my it's sister very... and her husband made the same trip. Yeah. And they built on another national credit card and they didn't get a bill either. Well, in that case, yeah, there's something probably very definitely screwed up in the process. It may be. Do it for a living. I wouldn't pay somebody a hundred bucks. You could probably, I'm sure you could buy a program for a couple, three thousand that would do it. Enter those that data into a PC, and it's going to pop. That wouldn't pay me to buy one, not for my two or three mortgages. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to do that, I think you'd, I think it'd be very foolish to use a service because that's what they're going to do. They bought the software, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'd go buy the software. If you're serious about this, I'd go buy the software. I don't think it'll cost you that much. Okay, I just have to find a source for it. Well, that's hard. Is that hard to do? Tell you the truth, I don't even know where to start looking. Start with a bank. You got a bank contact? No, but I can sure get one. Well, of course you can. I'm sure that the, there are there are software writers that write stuff for financial institutions. 
and I'm sure your bank can put you in touch with them. Okay, I'll do it that. It should not be hard to run down, I will tell you. I, I would guarantee you I can run it down 24 hours. And I'm sure you're as smart as I am or smarter. Well, I will work on that angle. I do wish you well, my friend. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, guy, I'm Bruce Williams. Stick around. This is TalkNet. You sound like a, an intelligent lady. Thank you. And I think you, you, you probably uh, consider yourself a good citizen or whatever, right? Yes. Let's, I'm going to turn things around a little bit. You mentioned you have a son. Yes, sir. And you have a daughter. Yes. Daughter probably a little older than the son. Is she now still single, married, or what? She's married and in Washington. Why? Does she have any children? No. All right. Well, let's just take your your daughter for a minute. Let, I'm going to make your... No, I'm not going to do it, but your husband's <laughs> daughter, your daughter's husband just impregnated her, and she's going to have triplets in two months. Mm-hmm. And suddenly a car comes rocketing out of nowhere and kills your husband, kills her, kills him. Mm-hmm. Now, how would you feel if that, that then suddenly it was some 20-year-old kid had the minimum amount of insurance? You'd say, my God, how do they let somebody like that run around? Because he just did it in, in, in huge amount of damage to the family, putting aside the emotional damage. Now my daughter's about to have triplets, and there's nobody to support the family. Mm-hmm. And you're going to say to yourself, how socially irresponsible to have this guy running around with a minimum insurance. I wish my husband could be listening to you now. <laughs> I, I, have, I have had some of those same feelings, but... Uh, it's they economically it they take such a whack at you why do they do that um well because kids that age don't have any more accidents than anybody else mm -hmm. but the severity of the accidents mm -hmm. is considerably greater mm -hmm. and it just seems to me that if you're going to drive an automobile putting aside all the laws mm -hmm. that you have a social responsibility to carry enough insurance to as much as possible uh ameliorate undo the damage that you potentially could cause even through even them not being negligent just you know you yeah. fall asleep or a million things could happen mm -hmm. i mean certainly you and i are not above making mistakes no i just made one in march <laughs> <laughs> what did you get in march <laughs> what? i i connected with the rear end of a vehicle okay. uh which connected to the re rear end of another vehicle uh -huh. which connected to the rear oh, end of another goodness. vehicle gracious <laughs> sakes uh, now, you see what I'm, what I'm trying to get to. It's, and and the, second, the second part of the equation now is a little closer to the bone. Mm -hmm. It is true that there's no reason to go after your son, but a lot of people would. Mm -hmm. And they get a judgment against him, which means he starts out his life having gone through, a, bank, having gone through a bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not something to wish on the kid. You're sending him off to college to prepare him to do all kinds of good things. Who wants a, a bankruptcy at 19 or 20, which is the only way out if he gets a couple hundred thousand dollar judgment against him? Well, you've certainly reinforced my feelings. Yeah. He's carried the appropriate insurance, or there's another alternative. Take the car away from him. Oh, uh, he's going to need it because Why? he's working in one end of town and he'll be going to school in the other this end. This is going to come as a great shock to you, Mama Bear. <laughs> I mean, there are two things. There are buses, number one. Oh, uh, they have a wonderful transit system. There are bicycles. But he's out Hold it. it. <laughs> and there's another problem. Well, wait a minute. You're laughing up a storm here, and I'm being deadly serious. I, I'm sorry. We could take. How much is that? You had 91. What kind of car? It's a Geostorm. What's that worth right now? Probably about 8000 Why not sell that, get him a $1,000 car, and use the $7,000 to pay for insurance over the four years? He doesn't need a seven, eight, nine, nineteen, nine. Yeah, I'll boop, 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 Brucey, baby. He doesn't need a nineteen ninety one car as a freshman in college. He needs that like he needs a cancer. Well, he saved for it. I don't care. I, I, let him pay for I don't feel I could tell. Him. Yes, you can. You say, son, you carry the appropriate amount of insurance, and if you can't afford it, then you can't afford to drive that car. Now those are the rules. Now you don't like the rules. I'm not paying for your college, and I'm sure you're kicking in something for college. Yes. That's the rules. It's the golden rule. He who has the gold <laughs> makes the rules. Oh, you're laughing, but I would. Well, I'm in I a just, heartbeat. I, I'm. I'm. I. I guess I'm giddy because it's the first time I've ever called in, and I'm a long time listener. Well, I'm so delighted I'm a you did. But here's the thing: an 18 or 19 year old kid blew eight grand or nine grand or whatever the hell it was in an automobile. And then he's complaining because he can't pay for liability insurance. I don't care about collision. If he loses his car, too bad. That's no big deal. But the, he, socially, you teach him an enormously poor lesson in allowing him to run around underinsured. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't allow a kid to do that. I do wish you well, love. Thank who, you, Who Bruce. said parenting ends when they grow up? It just begins. I'm Bruce Williams.
This is TalkNet. Austin, Texas. Hello there. Welcome to TalkNet. Hi, Bruce. Um, I have an idea I'm interested in maybe selling, and I want to ask you a couple questions about that. Sure. Um, I built a piece of furniture that I have in my living room, and people come over, really like it, and they think it's a really creative idea. What kind of furniture? Um, this is a coffee table. Okay. And I... I guess along the same theme, I've thought of other things, you know, like an end table and bookshelves that I could do with the same type of... Um, Decor or, co or style or whatever? Right. And um, I was interested in maybe, you know, writing up some plans, you know, desktop publishing or something, and putting ad in a magazine like Popular Mechanic, Popular Science have a classified ad section in the back. They certainly do. I advertised and in Popular Mechanics when I was a kid. And anyway, I... Do you know they're having their 90th or 95th anniversary right now? Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. It's either 90th or 95th, and there's a museum in Michigan that's having over a year uh, exhibit of popular mechanics, which I think is pretty fascinating. Anyway, I was inter wondering, um, you know, say I wanted to take $1,000 for advertising or something. Not enough. Well, would, Not I, would I be better off picking one magazine... And I don't think you're gonna, term or, let's stop right now. I don't think you're going to sell any any plans in the classified section any place. Really? No. Okay. I didn't, I didn't say you can't sell any plans. You'll notice I said the classified section. Okay. Because I don't know that you're that anybody could be um, articulate enough to to describe something unique without a picture in this. Okay. Um, and perhaps see, it's one thing to advertise a finished product, but the plan's another matter. And I think that you have to show the finished product. Mm -hmm. And you okay. say, well, what do I need my plans for? Well, the same mm -hmm. thing is true with anything that you sell. But you can show plans of a, a picture of an airplane or the pattern for a quilt or whatever. Okay. But you know and I know that to build the thing, you got to have more than that. Okay. But you, but you know, the the if if you didn't have uh, an, an advertisement that said, you know, this is a a coffee table or uh, at least one or two representative pictures of what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And for more information, send $2 for our catalog deductible from the first order or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. okay. But I don't think you're going to do it in a classified. There are a lot of things that can be sold through classified advertising. Okay. But I don't... Now, that, now we know, let me say before I uh, turn you loose that I'm sure if you peruse... I haven't read Poppy Mechanics as an example for a number of years, mm -hmm. but I know that... Uh, there were and still probably are advertisements for build your own go kart and that kind of right. stuff. Uh, but you see, that's pretty generic. Right. I mean, when you talk about a go kart, I got a pretty good idea what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. At least the you know the, the the chassis, the the steering system, and all that sort of jazz. Okay. But you talk about a coffee table. Wow. I mean, that goes from everything from an old chest to uh, the hatch door of a of a ship that's been finished off, you know, and polyglycoded in some fashion. Right. Okay. Uh, you know, there's there's a million uh, permutations to that. Would you not agree? Yeah, that's true. So I think you'd have a tough time describing something like that without an accompanying okay. picture. Okay. Um, well, just another general question about maybe selling plans, like you mentioned, go-kart plans. Okay, I want you to hang on to that emotion. When we get back, we'll talk about selling plans. I'm Bruce Williams. This is TalkNet. I'm chatting with a gentleman in Austin, Texas, wants to advertise plans in various publications for some of his creations. Your turn. Um, in selling plans, like I guess my question is, what what liability do you have? For a great deal. Your, your plan. A um, great deal. Really? Yes, sir. Okay. You, I mean, I, I don't know how many how many people are going to get hurt on a on a coffee table. Right. Right. But on the other side, suppose you come up with a great plan for a swing set. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, uh, you didn't think it out quite the way you should have, or it would be, uh, for, again, for whatever reason, if, if someone was not quite as uh, able to reproduce as they should be, and they wind up with something that's unstable and somebody gets hurt, guess who? Really? Okay. Guess who? And I, I think that the plan, the, if you're going to do something like this, at the, this is very basic, all right? should mm -hmm. be a corporation doing this, not an individual. Okay. That would give you some insulation. Right. And you'd also want some product liability if it's available and you might not be able to afford it. Right. And that, and that, that becomes very troublesome. Okay. Thanks a lot for your time, Bruce. I do wish you well. Okay, bye-bye. We're going to East Point, Georgia. This is Georgia night. Hello there. Hi, Bruce. It's a pleasure talking to you again. Wow. Glad you're here again. Yeah, I called you a couple of weeks ago. 
Well, son of a gun. People say, how did he get through two weeks in a row? Yeah, I'm diligent. Well, I'm glad you made it. What's on your mind? Well, I talked to you about buying a a piece of property, mm -hmm. and I just I had been having problems getting financing on it because it was uh, classified as investment income or investment property. Yes, I recall. An investment property, you have to pay a lot more of it in terms of interest and usually put more money down. 30% down. Yeah. But uh, I talked to the mortgage guy, and I said... Uh, I decided to move into that house and uh, rent this my present house out. I think we discussed that. Right, and he said, "Great, everything's fine. You're gonna, we shouldn't have any problem getting the money." Yeah, because now it really it'll, it'll qualify for Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, that crowd. Right. Well, I found the property, mm -hmm. made the offer, it was accepted, All right. and everything was going fine until he calls me tonight and says that he's talked to most of his sources and they don't. They don't believe you. Right. They don't feel that I'll move from a oh, that's home, right. they don't believe you. A home worth uh, 120 down to uh, 65. Well, will you? Sure, I intend to. For how long? Two weeks? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about? Well, I haven't... Is that what you're talking about? A month? Probably a month. Okay, then, they're, then you're committing fraud, and they say we're not be a part of that. We're not going to get snookered. Because we're right back to what they don't want to do. That's why do you suppose they don't want to finance investment properties as closely as they do primary properties? Because people walk away from that. That's exactly right. And you're trying to snooker them, and I don't necessarily hate you for that. Well, I can afford the property. No, you can't. Not in their Except point of I view. I can't put the big down payment. No, but, down. Baby, but if, you, if it goes bad, which one are you going to let go, your house or this property? If things really get tough. Well, it depends on what purpose. No, if things get tough a year from now, you lose your job or bad illness in the family, who knows? Well, I don't want to wish things on you, okay? That's true. If, 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 if it really gets down to push and shove, we got to let one of them go. Which one are you going to let go? The cheaper one. Thank you very much. The lenders are not stupid. That's why they want a bigger insulator in there. And, uh, you know, to, to, here's a guy going to move from a great neighborhood into a slum. I mean, they must think that you, they, they're saying, what does he think we were born yesterday? Good luck, guy. I'm Bruce Williams. This is TalkNet. And over Connecticut. Hello there. Welcome to my world. Hey, Bruce. How you doing, guy? This is indeed a pleasure. Well, thank you, sir. Bruce, my wife and I are unhappy campers, and uh, I need your advice to turn things around. Uh, right. well, I don't know if I could turn it around, but let's see <laughs> Let's see what the problem is. Okay. Uh, we you, went out really, of, if nothing else, I'll send you the ingredients for some more. How oh, that? that would be wonderful. Yeah, you can put a little marshmallow and chocolate <laughs> over the graham cracker over the fire. Oh, what yeah. could be better? Oh, boy, you got the ingredients already. You know, in listen, kid, I ran a kid's camp for how many years? I know all about that stuff. Oh, yeah, these are these are big kids that we go with here. That's all right. I wouldn't mind. You <laughs> go, <laughs> what's on your mind? Go okay. ahead. Uh, we, uh, my wife and I, engaged in a contract with a distributor to purchase a trailer and we did so out of state. And the a reason travel why, trailer? Pardon me? A travel trailer or a mobile travel home? Travel trailer. You pull it behind your vehicle. You know? Oh, a travel trailer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we went out of state simply because the uh, the only place that we can get this particular trailer was from a distributor in another state. All right. This is a new one? A brand new one. Okay. Yeah. How, how big a trailer did you buy? Uh, this is a 26-footer. Oh, that's a biggie. Yeah. <laughs> like, a, like one of those big air streams up in that class? Yeah, it's like that. Okay. Yeah. This was uh, specially constructed. It's one of the uh, latest in, uh, innovations with uh, aluminum construction and uh, fiberglass siding, similar to what you'd find in a motorhome. Okay. Well, anyway, this one, uh, we had taken a great deal of pains to shop, and when we wrote up this contract with the dealer, we made sure everything was in detail. It was this, does this thing go on a big wheel in the back of a pickup truck, or does this go on the back of a bumper of a car? Uh, well, you need something bigger than a bumper because... Uh, well, I'm, or not the we, bumper, but the, in other words, is it going to the back of a car or is it going to the back of a truck? Uh, it's, it's a bumper connection. It's well, not what they call a fifth wheel. That's yeah, I know what a fifth wheel. That's what I'm asking. Was yeah. it a fifth wheel type? No, okay. no, it's not. This All is right. a bumper connection. It weighs about 7,000 pounds gross weight. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. How do you break something like that down? Yeah, I know. It, yeah, it's got its own set of brakes. And, you know, Boy. Yeah, these, these, what did that cost? Uh, 
This one happened to be around thirteen thousand dollars. All right. Yeah, and that's relatively inexpensive yeah, new one compared pretty, to what's out there. I would think so. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, in any case, we we were very uh, complete in the detailing of this contract, mm -hmm. including uh, the last paragraph where uh, we had them note on there that the check was refundable, the deposit check that is, mm -hmm. in the event that the trailer wasn't delivered as we wrote it up in, in this contract. All right. And lo and behold, the thing comes in, and uh, there are major structural problems. How, how did you determine that? Well, as an example, uh, storage compartments. Uh, they're usually cut in on the outside, and uh, you, know, you can use them for a number of things. But one we had ordered in a, a particular spot on the trailer. Mm -hmm. For any specific reason? Yeah, it was, in, it was in the bottom of a wardrobe that otherwise would be inaccessible from the inside. Okay. We were trying to utilize that space. Of course. And so, um, consequently, it wasn't there. It was in another location, which was virtually useless because there was no space in it. Mm -hmm. On the opposite side of the trailer, we ordered uh, a larger storage space. Uh, for It was under the bed, like, you know. Right. And uh, that was obstructed by pipes and wires. And So that wouldn't be very much worth much no, either. No, not at all. And there was a number of other things, mm -hmm. problems with the wall covering. Uh, you know, it was really a, sh a shoddy job that we thought, at least. I guess these things are all constructed pretty much on a, on a custom basis. Yeah, I think so. In fact, we were told this one was being custom built for ourselves. Mm -hmm. In any case, um, we talked to the distributor and told him that uh, there were certain things on there that, you know, we had to have. Yeah, are you on a cordless phone? Uh, yes, I am. How about going to a hard phone okay. while we're talking here? Okay. Go ahead. How's that sound? Yeah, just, just keep talking. Go ahead. Okay. And uh, so uh, we we brought all these things to their attention, and they told us that, uh, you know, they agreed with us that the thing was uh, not built according to uh, the specifications. specifications. Sure. And it really wasn't built to the, what they had expected of them over the years in mm -hmm. doing business with this company, all right. with the manufacturer. Um, they... What are you rolling around there? Pardon me? You're rolling something around now? No. You're making all kinds of racket on your... I am? <laughs> yeah, you uh, really are. Just hold still. Okay. Uh, so, uh, they notified the manufacturer of the problems. Yeah. And, uh, the manufacturer asked to have a list faxed. We did that. And the, the manufacturer faxed back another list saying, these are the things that we can fix and these are the things that we cannot fix. Well, what, what are the things they cannot fix? The major things, uh, the, the access doors, the wall covering couldn't well, be changed. Well, it would seem to me that that's their problem. Though. Yeah, I know. it. So we, we yeah. tried to convince them to build us a new trailer. And this was back in February, by the way, we ordered it. Mm -hmm. Three weeks ago, the distributor notified us uh, that the factory absolutely refused to build a new one, but they were willing to take it back from the state we bought it in, back to Indiana, where they're pretty much all made down there. Yeah. And uh, but and, and what? And we, we manufacture it, we build it, we fix it. Well, can that be done? I mean, that's a question I don't know. No. See, because they sent us a list saying that oh, the oh, things oh. they can't fix. In other words, you're telling me that, let, let's take one specific item. you got the one door on the side of the right. thing, and there's, it's all uh, confused with pipes and wires. That right. cannot be corrected. That cannot be corrected. Well, in that case, I tell them too bad, Charlie. And right. uh, how much of their, I, I, I see where we're going with this, and they got some of your money. How much? Eight, $1,850. Well, I think you may have to sue them for that. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking that, too. Well, I think you're going to have to, if they won't gratuitously, uh, voluntarily, or whatever term you cho choose to use, relinquish those funds, mm -hmm. you obviously are not going to go and, and give them any more. No. And you have to go after them. Yeah. Is there is there one way to do that better than the other? Yeah, I mean, it's called sue. Yeah, is it a small claims action? Well, how about this? If this is in, in Connecticut. What's the small claims limit in Connecticut? You're going to go to the... the Manufacturer, you go to the dealer. He got your money. Yeah, I have to go to the dealer. Yeah, I mean, you ask him first of all if you get my money back. Yeah, I already did. He said no. In that case, sue him. Yeah. So the uh, see the consumer uh, protection uh, system in the state we bought is quite different from that in Connecticut. But you bought the well. Let me know. This is a very simple question. Maybe the complex answer. Okay. You wrote the check to the dealer. Yes. In Connecticut. Uh, no, uh, he's in another state. 
the dealers in another. Well, then you're going to have to deal. That's where you're going to have to go after right. them in that state. Right. Okay. And do you think then it would be a small claims action? Then? I don't know that. You'll have to find out what the small claims limit is in that state. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we did that, and it certainly falls into that category. All right. That's where you, that, 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 you realize this. How far away is he from you? Uh, it's about uh, two and a half hours. Well, because the problem there is he can he can have you bouncing back and forth for two or three times. Yeah. yeah. Getting continuances. Not much you can do about that. Yeah. No, I often heard you say that you would just pack a lunch and go sit in there until he gave me your money. Well, that's another problem. I mean, I'm, that, that gets a little more complicated. Yeah, yeah. I wish you all, Guy. Thank you so much, Bruce. Okay. I'm Bruce Williams. you got to wonder about people that do business that way, though, huh? This is TalkNet. Harry Truman's hometown, Independence, Missouri. Hello there. Welcome to TalkNet. Hi, Bruce. Thank you for taking my call. You're very uh, welcome. What's up? A little nervous, excuse me. Uh, Not to be nervous. We haven't lost a customer since. <laughs> Gee, it must be yesterday at least. <laughs> okay. What's happening? Um, I am kind of caught in the middle of a situation. That's where most of us find ourselves, and we don't like being there, do we? Thanks. Okay. Um, the problem is, is I work in a small, understaffed branch office of a large corporation. Okay. I have an employee who is extremely good. You're the, you, were, you were a supervisor of some yes. kind? Yes, mid-level management. Okay. Okay. Got an employee who is very good when she's there. Mm -hmm. Our company has a liberal, or what I call liberal, sick policy of 120 hours a year. What's that transfer to days? 80? Okay. More than that. It's 40 hours in a week. You mm -hmm. said 120 hours, right? Right. Three weeks. Right. I think you said two weeks. Okay. Did you say two or three? It's, oh, well, I meant three. Well, did, okay. It, okay, you did say two, didn't you? I'm, I'm not losing it completely, am I? I I think I did. Well, whatever. Okay, Anyhow, so you, they give you three weeks off. Right. Is there any way that has to be um, accounted for? Do you have to have a medical uh, certificate if you're out so many days? Or you if just, it's more than two days, yes, I do. Two consecutive days. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, the employee I have has used 140 so hours. So she, she be, it is over the, the limit. Right. Do you get penalized after that? Uh, well, my boss says I have to talk to her and counsel her for being undependable. <laughs> what your boss is telling you is the facts of life, that you can't fire people without all sorts of documentation, anecdotal records, and all that kind of good stuff, mm -hmm. or, you, or you invite a lawsuit. Okay. Every one of these illnesses, uh, I mean, I also process her insurance form, mm -hmm. is legitimate. But mm -hmm. if I write all this down, I can legally counsel her and then take action well, on Well, I don't know. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you, you took a quantum leap just Okay. Now. First well, of all, do you know what an anecdotal record is? Uh, yes. That's when you write down that you've talked with the person. No. And but what did you leave? There's a major, major ingredient here that you got to write up front. Oh, I write. I have all the documentation. No, you do it at the time. You don't do it two days later, four days later, six days later. Uh, it's or you can, the other word might be contemporaneous record. You have to do it when 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 you're doing it. In other words, Mary Jane didn't show up at ten thirty-seven today. Not two weeks ago, Mary Jane didn't show up at ten thirty-seven. The value in the second case is dramatically diminished. Okay. They call it contemporaneous or anecdotal and. No editorializing. She didn't show up. Okay. You don't say that slugger didn't show up. Mm -hmm. You see the difference? Yes. It's just strictly the facts. Like you're a newspaper reporter. Well, that's a bad example because most of them don't know what they, <laughs> they editorialize like crazy too. Okay. But you know what I'm saying. Now, I my boss is having every one of her sick days sent to me so that mm -hmm. I can talk to her. Yeah, but see, you have not kept the records that I've described to you until now. Yeah. No. Now, you can talk to her. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the laws are. See, some states, you can fire somebody for right reason, wrong reason, or no reason. Other states, you can't. And we get into gender, too. It's, t it's easier to fire a male than it is a female right now. It's easier to fire a white male than it is a black male there, yeah. I mean, there's just these sensitivities. And, I mean, whether they're right or wrong is not the issue here. Mm -hmm. The issue is that you got to contend with that in the, in the marketplace. Okay. So instead of just now that she's better, she's been back for about two days. I should two days. <laughs> you say you, 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 you're you're a rock and a hard spot. When you mm -hmm. threw into the thing, you said, "Well, they're all legitimate," and you know you want to you don't want to play Scrooge McDuck here. Mm 
mm-hmm. uh, by letting somebody go because they're unfortunately they just their health is a little more fragile than yours or mine might be. On the other side of that, you're in a small if you were in a in a major uh, office of your corporation, you can absorb illnesses relatively easily. When you have three or four or five or six people working somewhere, if you have five people and one somebody's out, twenty percent of your workforce isn't around. Yeah, and that that can really take its toll in the marketplace. Mm-hmm. So you counsel her. What is she going to say? I mean, she's legit. We haven't argued with that. What are you gonna, what, how would you counsel her? What would you say to her? Well, uh, I'm she now. Okay, I've been out. I've missed all this time. Uh, almost a month now I've been out. And a month and how long a period of time? Uh, well, it's a week here, two No, no. Since oh. we started keeping score, and it's okay. 140 hours. When, when was hour one? How long ago? Uh, January 1st. All right, so the first half of the year, she's been out a month. Mm-hmm. That's about one-sixth of the time. Right? Right. Now, what do you say to her? Here I'm sitting across the desk, dewy-eyed. The boss is looking down her long proboscis. Now what? Your turn, boss. Well, Count, counsel me. Okay, what I'm supposed to say... No, counsel me. Yeah, we're, we're a little role-playing here. Counsel me. Uh, okay. Um, you've been taking, or uh, you have had some circumstances that have taken you out of work. I've been sick. Oh, boy, have I been sick. And it's affecting the performance in this office. Mm-hmm. I know that. The work is not getting done. Customers are starting to realize that we're constantly behind. Well, I, yeah, and I'm real sorry about that, but I was really sick. I mean, I, my doctor has told you, and I could get anything. I'll show you the prescriptions. Okay. You're not uh, doing so well. Well, I'm not saying that your illnesses or accidents have been unfounded. What are you saying? We, we, we don't function without you. Well, I, I'm really complimented. I want to be here so bad I can taste it, but when I'm sick, I just can't come in. No, I realize that you can't, but if you're sick, yes. <laughs> I don't know. What do I tell her? If you're sick one more time, you're out? I guess you're going to have to, Scrooge. Okay, well. That's the, listen, being a boss is not easy. That's no. why I was going through the role playing with you, you see? Yeah, like I said. I mean, does she have independence? How old a person is this? 34 years old, two kids and a husband. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a problem, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, what is the, I only have a couple seconds left. Okay. What kind of diseases is she coming? I mean, is it is it purely she's just not a, a well person? Is it some of the psychosomatic? Uh, well, does, let she, me just does she does she uh, run these vines? She take, got ice skates for Christmas, broke her leg, huh, came back, was yeah. in a car accident, out for a month or a week and a half. Right. Month later, the medicine she took for her car accident reopened her ulcer, and she was out two days with. Uh, Tests and observation. She's more to be pitied than censored, this girl. Yeah, she's had viral pneumonia, and she needed a DNC. Oh, aside from that, she's in the peak of health, huh? I, I can't imagine what could go uh, next. Well, but... don't say ever say that. You heard cholera? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd talk to her and say, look, I really sympathize with you. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to start off with a clean blackboard as of today. Okay. But if your record doesn't improve, however uncomfortable and however unfortunate it is, we are just simply going to have to figure out a way to get along without you because your performance is not only affecting you but the other people in the office. But we are going to give you a, a straight shot. Now, I want you to hold up your right hand. No more ice skating. Never mind skis and skateboards and skydiving is out of your, your uh, the things you're going to do. And be very careful when you're playing ball with your kids. Yeah. But I tell her, look, you, you, <laughs> when you're starting out, but I mean, if you miss another five days or six days, I hate to do it to you, but I'm going to have to let you go. Okay. And then and do it. Just document all that. And well, uh, but, but you start out with, look, we're going to start out with a clean blackboard here. I mean, you, maybe you just had a bad run of luck. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, your bad run of luck is affecting all of us, but this is what we're going to do. And I do it that way. Okay. I wish you well, dear. Thank you. Hang in there. You know, Harry Shrews, well, the, the guy that lived in your town, he said, the buck stops here. Well, you're in the kitchen, kid. Hang on to the heat. I'm Bruce Williams. This is TalkNet. 1-800-743-8000. Idaho Falls, Idaho. Welcome to my world.
Hi, Bruce. How are you? I am just fine. Today. Let me remind you, tomorrow between noon and 6 Eastern Time, we'll be here taking your calls off the air. I do hope people, even from Idaho Falls, will call. What's on your mind? Um, I have a little problem. I think um, I've been trying to get a hold of you the last couple of days. I think everybody in America is having a crisis because you are the hardest man to get a hold of. Well, I don't know about that, but I'm <laughs> glad you're here. What's happening? Um, okay, I used to live in the state of Florida. Well, that's one of your first mistakes, you see. Leaving yeah. Florida is always a mistake. <laughs> Anyhow, go ahead. Anyhow, I rented a movie, and um, like a couple of days before I moved out here to Idaho, yeah. and I returned the movie. I placed it on the counter, and um, it was overdue. It was two days overdue, mm -hmm. and um, I was never going to rent from the store again. So I left. There was a line, and I said, okay. <laughs> and I dropped you, it off. You try to finesse them out of two days, huh? And, yeah. It, well, actually, you know, video charges do add up. <laughs> well, without regard to that, whether they add up or not, you're supposed to pay your bills. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, listen to what happened. I can hear what happened already. Well, I got a letter from a creditor saying... You know, it was $100 because, because you, know, you didn't you return the bill. Yeah. That's right. You didn't return the movie. It's not here. We don't know what you're talking about. You owe us $100. The creditor was saying um, due to some, I wish I had the letter here, but I don't have it with me. It was saying something like due to this clause or so-and-so um, under the law, we can take you to court. Um, well, I mean, that's all crap. First of all. I know, see, I, I was almost, I was going to be very sympathetic a minute for, for a moment there until you told me that you, and you're honest, that you told me to try to finesse them. That's right, right. And, I, and I let them know that, that I'm honest and I was real, I'm really being sincere. All right, here's the thing. Most video operations haven't got a leg to stand on them, but this the return to video thing. Right. Because most of them, there are exceptions to this. There's one chain that I know of as an exception. Most of them, when you bring it back, you just lay it down and go by. Mm -hmm. You pay for it in advance. Mm -hmm. There are there is at least one chain that I know of that doesn't do it that way. You pay on the way in, not the way out. I see. So there is something positive happens on the way in, but most of them you just you can even even drop them through the hole of the door on the way to work in the morning. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And, and no re and no re and no receipt is issued. So as a consequence, since their system has such a huge hole in it, they have very little recourse other than blustering and holding their breath and turning purple and. You know, uh, throwing sassafras root all over the place. They can do all those things, but they have very little force and effect. Yeah, because, I see. But, but in your case, it's a little different uh -huh. because you deliberately left it someplace and tried to get out. A beat, you're trying to beat them out of some of the. I mean, you you can't just say I took it back there on time, uh -huh. and turned it in because that's not true. Uh huh. And you're not gonna. I don't think you're gonna perjure yourself. Right. On the other hand, what you what I would do if I were you is say, but yeah, yeah, you could color this a little bit. And sorry, guys, go ahead, get on my back. But you could say I was in a big hurry and there was a long line, and I just became frustrated. And that was wrong, but I became frustrated and laid it in the counter and left. Yeah. And offer to pay the, and offer to pay the two days. Uh, that's what I was going to do. But the problem with that scenario is you never did leave put it in anybody's hands. Mm -hmm. well, well, then, what is the scenario when you drop it in a little slot? Well, that's a different matter because the slot was provided for you to drop it in. They take a certain hazard there, mm -hmm. but they didn't leave a counter there. They just to, for you to lay it on because there was a line in front of you. Mm -hmm. So the, the, there is some culpability on your part here. Right. How old are you? I'm 23, no, I and kinda, I'm scared I, that I'm not going to be able to ever buy a house. Well, I don't think we're going we're to lose your, uh, your credit completely. I, I mean, I feel horrible, and I've written the, um, the creditor, which, who was... Well, this is like, what you got that's turned over to an agency now, and their job is to grab as much cheese as they possibly exactly. can. Exactly, and I, and I understand that, but this man was so rude. Needless to say, I'm not going to explain what happened, but he ended up hanging up on me. Mm -hmm. So I called the video store and um, so spoke with the supervisor who was very understanding and said, look, you know, people do this every day. They come in, they take out 25 videos, say, oh, yeah, I returned all of them. You know, you sound like you're sincere and you're acting like you want to work with us. Um, I would suggest writing a letter to the president. So I wrote a letter and explained to him that I did return it and that I'm not being malicious in any way and that I'm sorry about what happened, but $100 is a lot to ask for and that if you wanted, I would pay the late fee charges, but I just... I, I can't see spending one hundred dollars for something that I'm not responsible for. Well, you, you understand? See, I understand. Is that what's your first name? Laura. Laura, I understand exactly. But your case is weakened demonstrably by the larceny that you exhibited when you took the thing back and didn't want to try to beat them out of their rental. Mm -hmm. That's the pro the flaw in this whole thing. Okay. I think if I were you, I'd try to negotiate the deal. 
Okay. And it can be negotiated. And you may wind up spending 40 or 50 bucks. It's a cheap lesson. Mm -hmm. it's really, I know it's a lesson learned. It's, it's a really a cheap lesson. The uh, if, if, you'd play, if you'd done everything, if you'd taken it back on time and whatever, you could, you could uh, reasonably bluster and say, look, I, I did it by your rules and so forth. But I don't think... And I would hope this be the case for forty or fifty bucks, however much that seems to be right now, Laura, mm -hmm. that you prostitute yourself for that kind of money. Yeah. And that's what it would that's exactly what it would be if you just said, Oh, I brought it back on time and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. I mean if you if you're gonna if you're gonna do something, do it for a worthwhile number is what I'll get to. Not for that kind of money. Right, not for a hundred dollars. No. But I would I would do is say, look, because I didn't follow the rules strictly, I am prepared to negotiate. Right. But I'm not going to give you $100. Now, I'm willing to give you $25 for your trouble to go away. I and see. And then you're probably going to wind up at about 50 Laura, I do wish you well. Thank you. And you'll get a house one day. <laughs> okay, great. I'm Bruce Williams. Stick around. I'm so here pleased you're here. This is TalkNet. The uh, credit card number and have them ship it. Does that sound fairly reasonable? <laughs> Sounds pretty reliable. Would the story be reasonable? Okay. Um, it turns out, I didn't know it at the time, but the, the uh, jewelry department is leased. Oh, that's, no, that's not unusual. To, it's probably a concession. Okay, I was unaware of that. Uh, they, don't, they don't participate in the storage credit system. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Well, I, I, I wasn't aware of it, okay. so I called up and said, right. well, here's my uh, department store card number, right. and here's where I live, and this is the watch I saw, and, and can you please send it? And uh, are you saying because they don't participate in the store's credit system, that would be the reason for them telling me that they don't send anything to anybody over the phone? Well, they, don't, they have that right. You see, that in many department stores, and this is something a lot of folks don't realize, mm -hmm. a lot of departments are not run by the store. The uh, wallpaper department, for example, can be a concession. Now, ordinarily... Uh, majority of the now jewelry might be an exception because we're talking about high ticket stuff. Mm -hmm. But ordinarily, they they participate in if they if there's a store charge, you can you can charge uh, your goods in their store charge. Right. The reason that they gave me had nothing to do with uh, not being a participant in the store's credit system. Mm -hmm. They just told me flat out that they've had trouble sending items that people claim that they don't get them or that they come in damaged. And I thought, you know, insurance would cover that. Well, it may, well, no, it, 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 it probably, that, I can see where they say it's more hassle than it's worth. But, well, goodness gracious, there are just hundreds of companies that do business by mail every day. Well, that's what I said. I said it's, but they, but it's their option. Oh, it's it's their, their, you know, if you want to be stupid, there is, there's a lot of laws about a lot of things, but there are no laws against stupidity. Good thing, there's a lot of people in jail. I just thought it was kind of silly when I told them I'd like to purchase something from you, and they didn't want to know. They have nothing to disagree on, you and I. They pro you know, I've had people call me on the show, mm -hmm. and they'll say, boy, I'm in business, and I got a $200 bill. I, got, I can't collect it. And what do I do about it? Well, how much do you do a year? Oh, we do a half a million. And you got one lousy $200 bill, and you're concerned? But some people, you know, it bothers them. It's just the cost of doing business. How would you suggest? No, so there is. I go to another jeweler. That's what I do. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You got to, what, what, is it a name brand watch? Yes, and it's 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 not that great of a name. It's not all that terribly expensive. It's only a little expensive. How much is it? It was three hundred. You can buy that watch in a local jeweler at the same price. Though, if you can't, they'll order it for you. Oh, okay. For pity's sake, I mean, there's lots of people want to do business with you. Why would you want to fight with somebody who doesn't want your money? I just couldn't understand that I, I was telling them I want to buy something from your store. Yeah. and they, As they said, my friend, there is no law against stupidity. I see. I do wish you I well. I appreciate your help. Okay, guys. Cincinnati, your turn. Hello there. Hi, Ruth. Hello there. Uh, you are an attorney, I understand. Yes, sir. Okay, help me. Well, number one, I, I can't certainly speak for New York law, but I... Uh, Let's well, talk in general terms. I understand that. In general terms, it doesn't make any difference whether the will's been probated or not. Uh, I, I have to believe this this man got some very bad legal advice from the original lawyer who allowed a will to be drawn that would leave everything to his wife, who is not the mother of his children. I would think so too. Uh, but, but he maybe look, he could be ticked off at his kids. Uh, you know, it's... that that could be. But once it's done, it's done. Right. And she's out of luck. So that even though that hasn't been probated and the original uh, beneficiary is no longer with us, right? 
she's dead now. The her her estate would be the beneficiary. Legally, you know, the the right to the to the proceeds of the estate passed on his death. And the, the legal technicalities may not have been taken care of yet, but that, right. that legal right is is, a, is a, uh, an asset of the estate now. But uh, I, that's what I was getting to. Even though she's no longer in the picture, that doesn't matter. Right. I yep. kind of suspected that would be the case. It's a darn shame, but yes, uh, it is. That's that's the way it works. I really appreciate it, Counselor. All right. Thank you so very much. Have a great New Year. Thank you. Uh, let me see. Our friend was in Safety Harbor. Are you there, dear? Yes, I am, I sir. think that's probably the correct answer, but I think my attorney friend in Cincinnati and I would both counsel you to see an attorney on your own and get that opinion confirmed. I have one more thought, if I may express it. Sure. Uh, my father had a cottage on a lake up in upstate New York. Yeah. That is not mentioned in any way, shape, or form in either will. It doesn't have to be mentioned. If he left everything to her, everything is everything. That means things that are mentioned and things that are not. His, his first attorney sent a second letter to me after he sent me a copy of my dad's will yeah. and stated that since that wasn't in the will, that we had to sign off on that. That's just for the title. I don't think that it, 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 I think what they're saying is it would make the, the title easier to clear. I but I don't. I don't believe because you know. But anytime there's a, a possible, a possibility of litigation, title companies get nervous. But the fact that he left everything to his wife, I think, is just about the day or dead end. Okay, thank you so much. Why would your dad do that? Do you have any idea? No, I don't, because we were very close. Hmm. It was just everything was in both names, except for the camp on the lake, which was only in his name. Mm -hmm. well, I don't think that would matter. Well, I do you wish you well, dear. Our telephone number on this holiday, 800-743-8000, I'm Bruce Williams. This is TalkNet. St. Louis, hello there. Welcome to my world. Hello, Bruce. Thank you. Uh, I got a question for you regarding selling some property. I have uh, property that I own, and I have a real estate, a real uh, tail store on it. A retail store? Retail uh, store. All right. Uh, just recently, within the last uh, six months, the number one and two fast food chains have built on either side. Mm -hmm. uh, one on the corn end corner of each block on either side of me. Mm -hmm. Your favorite I, sandwich, huh? Yes, and it was the property had, did not have a whole lot of value till this happened. Uh, they paid tremendously more than our property was worth. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> well, pay, that's true. <laughs> whatever, what a willing and able buyers prepared to pay establishes value that is exactly what we think has happened here to the point where we would like to sell and my question to you is would you look to go through an agent and just take the commission hit or first try to contact real estate departments of other fast food chains first no i don't think you're able to do that okay and you just don't go to any real estate agent either okay there are there are companies that will specialize in that Okay. How would I go about? How do you find them? Your next form. question. I'm not so sure that I. I think I'd just be on the telephone. Okay. Oh, well, I'd, I'd start with this. Who handled the transaction for, for McDonald's next door? Is that who you're talking about? I yep. guess. That's number one. Well, who handled that transaction? You talk to them. Okay. That means is it a local real estate guy. Wait, that I don't know, but because I believe. Well, as a matter of fact, they were involved with the owner of a real estate company. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, started. I mean, the, I'm not you know, the average person selling retail real estate is not equipped to handle what you're talking about. Okay. But, I mean, there's somebody in town there that's noted for doing commercial stuff, and they don't do retail for the most, or, I'm sorry, don't do residential. Mm -hmm. They specialize in, in commercial. Okay. I'm not sure they'd turn down a residential deal if they didn't have to do very much about it, but what I'm trying to get to is there are have to be in your town, as in every area, somebody who's noted for, you know, start with your banker. Okay. And I'd say, hey, who's handling the, who's the, the, the primo guy in town for handling commercial real estate? Now, would you agree that uh, keeping the ongoing business ongoing up until that sale would be the best thing as far as to maintain abs the value? Abs abs well, it's not a question of maintaining the value. It, there's a little more to it than that. What kind of a business do you have there now? Uh, I'd rather not say. Is it making money? Yes. Well, why would you want to close it down? It can be moved. It's just the uh, the money for this property has to be split up, and be 
because of its value, there's no way that the store itself could sustain that type of money. Well, wait a minute. A minute ago, you told me the property wasn't... You think that because of this increase, in, incremental increase because of the activity next door... Yes. It's not worth anything more until somebody's willing to pay for it. That's correct. So it hasn't increased in, well, paper value. That mean, paper value, as we both know, is meaningless mm -hmm. until something happens. Right. So I, I don't quite understand what you just said to me. Well, that uh, the the store itself is fine for a family, but not for several families. As far as we couldn't pay the amount of money to the other people that they could make on the interest of the the value of that property if it were so, if it were sold for the for the same price these other parcels were sold for. Right. But that's a that's a, a how much did the the corners go for? Uh, one was uh, four hundred thousand. The other was six hundred and fifty. Mm. But how much? How does that relate in terms of size of your lot? One is uh, twenty-five feet larger. One is about fifty feet smaller. Mm. But these, the corners clearly are worth more than the interior. Okay. That's nice to know. So you, let's 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 assume. That, will you give me those two numbers real quick again. Uh, four hundred and four and six, wasn't it? Yes. So yours probably would fall somewhere around three, maybe? Okay. And how much do you think that your business, is that too expensive a piece of property for your business to occupy? Is that what you're saying? Uh, well, we could easily move it. Uh, I already looked just, say, one or two blocks away mm -hmm. for um, for the property and the building and everything, 40000 Oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, it's too expensive, then. <laughs> That's a fair, fair assumption, then. And I would already own all the fixtures outright, so it would just be the the cost of moving them. You're just what you're only a part. What is your your family owns this property? That's correct. You and a whole bunch of brothers and sisters and that right. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. How'd that happen? At death. And you were operating the business. Yes. And yet your father or mother left the property to all of them. Right. Which is there's no problem with us with that. Well, I I have a big problem with that. Uh, we're trying to do it. Uh, is to the best interest of all of us. Mm -hmm. Well, oftentimes, the use of a property is diminished by the value of the of the property fight by location. Mm -hmm. You know, the guy that was sitting on the corner of, you know, 57th Street and 7th Avenue in New York City 100 years ago, when they put up Carnegie Hall, but that property wasn't worth a whole lot of money. Today, it's worth, you know, bazillions of dollars. Right. And the use that might have been appropriate at one time is no longer appropriate. That happens. That happens. But I, I think I'd leave the business there until. What, I mean, what, 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 unless it's to your better interest. I mean, how, you're only a very. You're how many people are involved in this? Uh, six. Well, I mean, you're only a one-six owner. Right. You ought to do what's in your best interest, not what's in your brothers and sisters' best interest. Okay. Now you mentioned there's a forty thousand dollar affair. Is that going to be on the market forever? The answer is probably no. You're right. That's a, is, and that sounds like a bargain, is it? Mm hmm But you ought to grab it and go. Okay. I wouldn't hang out for them. Okay. I don't think they do that. I mean, they, I'm sure they... I don't want to get involved in family affairs, but no. You ought to do what's in your own personal best business interest. I do wish you well, my friend. But undivided property to kids? Still a bad idea. I'm Bruce Williams. This is Talk Man. Jackson, Mississippi. Hello there. Hello. How you doing, Bruce? Thanks I'm doing great. Call. Oh, okay, guy. What's on your mind? Uh, I need to know how to handle the situation I'm in. Uh, I'm in sales, and uh, about eight months ago, I, we what we do, we go out and make cold calls. What do you sell? Uh, security. I mean security alarm systems? Things like that, yes. Okay. And usually we go out and we uh, do cold calls, you know, like a structure going up, new business, what have you. You, you're, you're canvas. You're, you're, you're soliciting. Exactly. Yeah. But uh -huh. while we're out, we also get referrals in, you know, by phone, mm -hmm. questionnaires. And I discovered about eight months ago, one of my receptionists was uh, holding the calls for someone else. Oh, well, that's you know? not unusual either. She had a boyfriend or somebody who's whatever. Right. And uh, so they, she admitted that she had done it. She later quit. Well, we're in the same situation again. The big problem is that uh, the other salesman, one of the other salesman's mother works in bookkeeping. <laughs> and, and my problem... Are you married? Is, huh? You married? 
Yes, I am. Get your wife a job. <laughs> that was <wasn't> that simple. <laughs> if you can't, if you can't beat the system one way, beat it another. Right. Well, what advice would you give? You know, how could I? Well, what's the source of your? Let me ask you this: What are the source of the referral call? Are these just people happen to call because of advertising, or uh, yes, advertising and and. Uh... Yeah, advertising, you know, radio, uh, what have you. They call and put in inquiries and say, well, will you have a salesman to call? Them? Yeah, these are just regular leads that come in. Right, regular and leads. And they're supposed to get whacked up uh, by what, by territory or by, by just each guy gets so many or what? Right, well, it's supposed to be either each guy gets so many or she should put them on the board and as we come in, we just look at them and pick them up and make the calls. But they never show up. What's the new person? Who's she giving them to? Uh, the same person. Maybe this guy is, uh, well, either he's a very good looking or does he pay him? <laughs> uh, we haven't figured that part out yet. Well, you're going you, you to be kidding me. You haven't figured it out. Have you asked? Right. Well, you know, they, uh, well, what, the one that quit earlier said that uh, she was told by him because he's been there a little longer than anybody else. Does he have a... That all calls should come to him, and therefore she did it. Well, how about this time? How about this one? Uh, probably the same thing. Well, why doesn't, I mean, do you have a sales manager? Uh, yes, we do. Well, hasn't anybody brought this to his attention or her attention? Uh, on the first one, yes. On, on the second one, we didn't know quite how to handle it because, you know, with the other person's family being involved in the bookkeeping, <laughs> it interferes with, you know, like contracts being kicked back and stuff like that. Well, I mean, I'd go back to the board. I don't know about you. If I were the sales manager, I want to know about this. Because how many salespeople are there? Six. And five of them are ticked off, right? Exactly. Huh. If I was a sales manager, that'd bother the hell out of me. So I should just... Uh, no, the, not the, you shouldn't. You all should. You right. all should go in as a group and talk to this guy and say, this has got to stop or we're all leaving. Okay. I'm I got to feel there's another company out there would hire you guys. Right, and I felt pretty confident, you know, in, in my ability and everything, but all of a sudden we stopped, saw that the referrals had stopped again. Well, that's absurd. I'm at your sales manager's fault. Having had this happen once, you ought to have something in the system where the stuff comes directly to him. Well, Every, I, I, every yeah. referral comes to him, and he parcels them out. That is exactly right. That's what I'll do. I just didn't want my new year to start with that same problem. But I hear you. But all, but don't do this unilaterally. Don't you be the chump. All the four or five or six of you, whoever, however many salespeople there are, you go rattle on this door. We're going to have a talk with you. I will do that. I do wish you well, my friend. Thank you very much. But the guys, any kind of a sales manager, you got to be kidding me. He'll jump on this one. All righty, WEVD country, New York, New York. I won't give up my day job either. Hello there. Hello, Bruce. Are you speaking to me? <laughs> I think I am, yes. Uh, I often hear you speak about getting an umbrella policy. Yes, ma'am. And that you mentioned that the price for a million dollars should be around 200 Or less. But you're in New York where all things, all bets sometimes can be off. Yes, but they not only wanted $445, but they wanted me to increase my car insurance from 250500 to 500500 Yes, ma'am, because you have to meet the floor. You see, the, the umbrella policy is a very high deductible policy. And they want you to raise your, your primary insurance to the... Uh, the floor. Otherwise, you have a hole. Well, isn't two hundred fifty-five hundred for a car that I drive a couple of thousand miles a year? Um, isn't that enough? Let me ask you a question. Yes, what I know. Your, I can what? kill somebody with that. One, with one mile. Yes, I know that. I've heard and you so say. So the answer is no. That is not enough. Well, that's why I thought I'd get the umbrella policy. I'm yes, ma'am. But you, you see an umbrella policy. Can you visualize? A couple of gears, you know, the, with teeth on them? Yes. Well, if you had one gear with 30 teeth, uh, they were an inch wide, the next gear had four teeth and they were six inches wide, that wouldn't work too good, would it? Not at all. They wouldn't mesh. Well, an umbrella policy has to mesh with your what's called underlying insurance. So, in other words, my umbrella policy would be uh, between the up 
uh, raising the price of my automobile insurance and the 445 that they want would be over 500. Yes, ma'am. Does that sound reasonable? Well, how, let's talk a little bit about you. How old are you? I'm 75. All right. And how much? How much do you? How much are you worth right now? Over a million. All right. And if, if you and I and bang somebody, the whole million could go away. Yes, that's why I. I well, is it worth? Is it worth spending five hundred bucks to protect the million dollars? I suppose so. But no, I... hold it. <laughs> I'm going to ask the question again. Mm. Is it worth spending five hundred dollars or a little more to protect the million dollars? The answer is yes. Thank you. Not you suppose so. The answer is affirmative. Absolutely and positively yes. And even if you didn't have the million dollars, it's worth having. Now, not so much in your case because your future income is going to be diminished by the number of years you have remaining to you. But if you were 25 or 35, even if you didn't have the money, the judgment could still be rendered against you against your future earnings. Yes, I understand. That's why I've been listening to you, and that's why I thought it was a good thing for me to, to have it. I um, Let me tell you this, without an all fairness, I'm surprised they'll give it to you. Why, because of my age? That's right. <laughs> um, you're laughing, but I mean, that's the, these are the facts of life. If you had it, then all likelihood you could maintain it. I am surprised they'll give you a new issue. I'm pleased for your sake. Mm -hmm. So I should go ahead and... and... Oh, oh, in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And be, I'd be scared to death if I were you to go near that car right now. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I'm not, I'm not. Your whole security in life could go right down the toilet with one poor decision. Well, I, I had it happen. I had one little, tiny little run-in that wasn't my fault, and I had that my, my car insurance was doubled. Mm. I'm not, that's pennies and nickels. Mm. Suppose it was your fault you did some serious damage. Mm. All of that security that you have right now, you're a very comfortable life could go right away. That's very true. Thank you very much, Bruce. I do wish you well, sweetheart. Stay with us. Thank you. All righty. Let's take a little time out. I'm Bruce Williams. Stick around for more. More TalkNet. We go now to Ithaca, New York. Hello there. Hi, Bruce. How are you? Oh, I'm just fine. Sounds, thank you. Sounds like you're the big entertainment in Ithaca, New York tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what does that say for Ithaca, huh? <laughs> anyway, what's uh, happening? Anyway, what's happening is my wife and I are both career people. She's in a management position in her company, which has had, which has had its headquarters here in Ithaca. Uh -huh. And I'm a salesman. Mm -hmm. What do you um, sell? My wife's company is moving their headquarters to a suburb of Boston, Massachusetts. What do you sell? I sell printing paper and industrial packaging. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, my wife is being heavily recruited to make the move to the Boston area. Mm -hmm. And now we wouldn't have to make the move for another year and a half. Okay? Mm -hmm. But she does have to make up her mind within the next month or so whether she wants to or not. All right. What kind of money is ma the mama bear earning? Well, she's earning right now. She's um, earning about thirty, about thirty-two thousand dollars. And what will the move? Will that help her or hurt her? Or? Well, we haven't gotten down to the financial negotiations yet. Well, about. Yet. Yeah, we, you must have some idea. The, the move will help. Okay. Right, the move is going to have to help because one of the big factors is that housing prices are a lot higher. Well, there really, well, we, aren't, we aren't done yet. How about you? What do you earn? Okay. Well, I'm earning uh, about thirty-two, thirty-three. You're earning the same amount of money. About the same amount of money. Now, what are your possibilities in that same area? Well, I think, my, of course, it would mean my changing jobs. And <clears throat> my viewpoint is that uh, there'd be a lot more opportunity for me there than there is here as far as uh, growing. What makes you think that it's going to cost you more to live there in terms of housing? Well, because we spent a couple of days there last week. Uh, traveling around with a couple of different real estate agents in some of the towns around Boston, the outlying areas, mm -hmm. and looking at housing and looking at the prices. And um, it seems that to match what we have now uh, would cost about 60 to 80 percent more. I'm surprised at that. Unless, unless Ithaca is just incredibly cheap because the real estate market in, the, in Boston, that whole area, went to hell. <laughs> Well, that, that's what these people told us, but they said it's, it's starting to pick up. And, well, uh, I'm sure that they're selling you something. <laughs> but I'm, I'm here to tell you that the real estate market in that area still is in the, is in the dumper. 
there. Now, everything is relative. The dumper there maybe look like <laughs> might, might look like uh, uptown to you. <laughs> what is let's talk about it? How big a house do you have right now? Well, right now we have our ranch house that's three bedrooms. It's about twelve hundred square feet. How and much? It, how much it's, on a, it's on an it's on an almost an acre lot. Well, that doesn't mean much. How much? How much is it worth? Yeah, uh, about ninety five. And you're telling me you got to pay 180 for a house in that area for the same size? I don't believe it. Uh, houses the same size on lots that are one fourth the size. Well, what difference does it make the lot size? <laughs> you're laughing. I'm deadly serious. This means less grass to cut. Yeah. Really? What are you doing with that acre? Tell the truth. Uh, room for the kids to play around in. My yeah, wife. They, they... My wife's a big gardener. She has a lot of gardens in our yard. Yeah, you can garden on a heck of a lot less than an acre. I don't believe it. I don't. I just don't. I maybe I'm wrong. I'm free to no. You're laughing. Keep laughing. I'm free to admit. I don't believe that it's going to cost you for a 1,200 square foot house, 180 grand or 175 grand, in some of the burbs of Boston. I don't see it. Well, okay, I, you know, we we only spent you know two and a half days looking around, but here's mm -hmm. here's the issue. The reason I'm I'm looking for advice is the fact that this would involve me, obviously, changing jobs. Hopefully, yeah. having another job lined up yeah. to to start at as soon as we get there. Yeah. Well, wait, hold it. Suppose you don't. You stay where you are until you get one. Well. Or are you and the kids stop. You know. You see, everybody seems to think, uh, not everyone, but certainly there's a perception that all of this has to dovetail perfectly. Well, life doesn't dovetail perfectly. Now, there's many a guy who has gone on to the new job and the wife and the kids have stayed in the house back in wherever till they get situated. Why could not the reverse be true? Yeah, that's right. We hadn't thought about that. I mean, I don't think, well, I'm, I'm, I think that deserves a lot of thought. Yeah, because right. I don't think you, it, it's possible. No, it is, it is not always possible to dovetail these things perfectly. But that's not a reason not to do them. Mm -hmm. True, true. Okay, but let, let, let me ask you the big question, though. Mm -hmm. the big What's question, the big one? The big question is the logistics or the feasibility of applying for a mortgage on whatever we decide to buy there in Boston or the surrounding area yeah. uh, with me just starting a new job there. In other words, not having a job history in, well, the, in the area where we're applying for a new mortgage. How much are we looking for? How much would we be looking for? Well, based on the equity we have in our house here and what we'd be looking for what there. Equity, well, let's, what equity do you have? Right now we have about $20,000. All right. And you, you're you're telling me you got to spend 175 at 200. I don't believe well, that. Well, 100, 100, 150, 160. It seems like minimum from what we saw just in our little bit of looking around last. Okay, year. let's see 150. And you're and you're going to put down 25, right? We could put down 25. So you're down to 100 and a quarter. I don't think you have that much of a problem. Assuming that your credit history is solid, people do move. Mm -hmm. I realize that that you're talking about uh, a new job and so forth, but. People do move, and those things are taken into account. How long have you been with the company you're with now? I've been with my company for eight and a half years. All right, that's that. She those things are taken into account. Yeah, so it shouldn't be a negative, really. I don't. Th well, I didn't say that. I don't. I don't think it'll be a great negative. Huh. It is not something that can't be overcome. Huh. Okay. But I. But I think the bigger thing is for you to get in your mind that the logistics of this are not necessarily going to dovetail. And it's very possible that your wife, when the time, you're lucky you got a year to have to play with, but your wife moves on. She gets a furnished room and she stays there. You stay with the kids until the house is sold and then you go on. And you may be out of work for a month or two. But with, with, with the kind of time that you have to play with, I don't think even that is necessary. Good luck, my friend. Well, times are changing. Husbands are following wives. I'm Bruce Williams. This is Tom. Over from across into that, from that vacant lot. Well, in that case, then the city caused this problem, not the guy across the street. It was exacerbated by the guy across the street. Right, and we warned them that this was going to be worse when they start building it. And we told them, and we told the city, and no one would do a thing. And we'd like to know who's responsible. Well, I'm, you're making it a little difficult, you see. If it was, if it, if just the guy, the private guy, built the house and caused the problem, there's not a question about responsibility. But here you're telling me that the city put a road in, and this guy's 
water drains out to the road. Is that correct? Well, the road was in there, and they resurfaced That's the hole. it. They, 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 the road was there, and then they put a house on it. On it, the other side of the yeah. road. Yeah. And the city didn't didn't build appropriate drainage on that road, apparently. Mm-hmm. Which seems to me the city's responsibility here. Ordinarily, you get your you get your water off your property to a city street. It's up to the or county or whatever it happens to be. Ordinarily, it's up to them when they put the street in to take, to take drainage into account. That's what you. Have. That's why you have storm drains and and uh, drainage right. ditches and that kind of stuff. We have a storm drain they stuck on our property out in front right near our water pipe what that water? comes into the house from the main street you mean that you mean you mean the, the lateral you don't mean a well, a well um we have uh water that comes from the main you have city water right well and then the fact we they have put no some... water coming uh our water doesn't come off of the other street what difference does it make well, when water, com- water comes under pressure. As long as the pipe isn't disturbed, it doesn't matter. Well, we think they disturbed the pipe when they put this kind of like storm sewer there. Because what makes you think so? Because you can hear water running out near that pipe out there and that doesn't come into our house. You mean you think that they broke the pipe? Right. On your because property? It's a hundred year old home. Well, if it's a hundred year old pipe, it probably should have been replaced anyway. Yeah, and he comes out, the city manager told us, well, we'll replace that when you sell or you move. In the meantime, it's leaking. As far as we know. Do they charge you by the gallon when you buy your water? Uh, yes, but it isn't on, it's, it's, on, before it's on the it other, comes to our house. It's on the other side of the meter, huh? Right. Huh, that's a pretty stupid answer, too. And uh, the land that washed out is way over from it uh, that's not causing it and it's gone right down into the main street which is a highway that goes through our town and it that has uh, nothing to do they with took that. three loads of topsoil away <laughs> and no one's uh, brought it back and filled in this great big hole off of your property right in that case i think you would have talked to the city attorney if they don't or the city engineer and the city attorney and if they don't want to talk to you, then consult your own attorney. Uh huh. Well, we did have one attorney that was supposed to go talk to him. I end up paying a bill, and I'm the one that ended up going down there and raising cane at the city meeting. Well, and raising cane. The in. Raising cane is not maybe the answer. Bringing it to the community, to the town father's attention, is very much inappropriate. Well, that's what I did. Was the raising cane is not necessarily... I, having sat at those meetings for eight years, I was a councilman, I was a mayor. Mm-hmm. People that come in breathing fire, from my well, point I of... I talked to a councilman. Yeah, my point is, when the people used to come in breathing fire, I didn't care. I, I'd do very little for them. Yeah, I didn't I need to be... Yell, what I'm trying to get to is I didn't need people yelling at me, and I don't think very many people appreciate being yelled at, but bringing a legitimate uh, complaint before a governing body is certainly your right and privilege. Uh, I would be talking to the, your local governing body because it would appear that the engineering for the road is where the, 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 the problem is. And uh, allowing the other home to be built without taking drainage into account. And it would seem to me that there is some responsibility on the part of the builder and more on the part of the, the governing body. I do wish you well, dear. I'm Bruce Williams. This is TalkNet. Alrighty, to Santa Barbara, California, in a lovely part of the world. Hello there. Howdy. Hi, brother. Hey, how, how are things going? Everything's well. What can we do for you? I was calling uh, with regards to trying to maintain my employability as an engineer in the medical business. I what got, is an engineer in the medical business do? Uh, develop new devices, maintain the facilities maintain the processes that we already have in our plant mm-hmm. and uh, what i do right now is medical r d mostly are you in a hospital or no no it's in a company that manufactures medical devices uh-huh. those things need to come from somewhere and of course the people that r d is them all right and what i've seen not in this business but in other engineering type businesses is a lot of people who become quite unemployable later on in life, say 50, 60 years old, and I'm 
trying to lay the groundwork now to avoid that. Why do you suppose that happens from the perspective that you currently enjoy? I mean, you've made an observation. Why? The ones I've seen end up in fields that presumably have appeared to be good previously. Uh, the one I think of most often of is aerospace. And then well, field, oh, and also military defense. Well, the conditions change. Right. And I'm there's just, no way in the world that you can anticipate all of the changes. I'm thinking there might be some, you know, what little I could do to maintain flexibility, you know, either to branch out into newer fields or just to retain, remain flexible enough that I would be able to get into another well, field with uh, relative ease well, later. What other fields? Are, I mean, you see, I'm over my head. I don't know what you exactly is you do. It wouldn't be productive here to go through the, the minutia. But the fact is, the more the, the more valuable you can become, the more skills you can develop, the broader the individual you are, the better shot you got at hanging out. Okay. Do you have any particular advice for somebody with a degree in engineering in other fields one might want to get into? I haven't a clue. I don't know enough about you. Okay. See, you see, first of all, the formal training and engineering, I guess, could be characterized as trade school. We could maybe agree on that okay uh but formal training uh does of not of necessity dictate where you're going to wind up as an example you're you're doing the r d work research and development on some kind of medical proposition right right what is to say you couldn't sell that stuff uh nothing right now I've never really been interested in selling, per se, but I understand. Well, your whether you're interested is, is not sometimes an issue. <laughs> there are a lot of times people do not what they're interested in, but what they must do. Okay. I'm just, you, you ask me, how do you make yourself more valuable? Right. Well, if you are multifaceted, you're obviously more valuable than if you're a narrow cast. No matter how good you are in a narrow area, if you're multifaceted. A little earlier, another segment, we had a guy that was uh, trying to make it up, make it uh, go along in the grocery business. And he wanted to be a, a meat management person eventually, okay? Okay. But they moved them over to groceries or whatever. Because they said, well, you know how much of a future in meat, whether that's true or not, it's not the issue. But the issue was he was bright and intelligent, so they, even though they felt meat is not your, your, your uh, bag, they put him over in groceries because they clearly thought he had some abilities. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. Well, the more the more versatility and the and the broader perspective that uh, you enjoy in the eyes of your your supervisors and bosses and whatever. Let's face it: if ten people are going to go away, I'm going to grab the guy who I think is the most versatile and hang on to him. Okay. All how right. how old are you? Thirty-seven. Well, you're a young guy. But yeah. I, I I would be I would be trying to climb out of a narrow a narrow mold which i think you feel that you're in right now things are going really great right now i've just yeah. seen a but lot you use the, you use you use the aerospace industry as an example right it went to hell for a while didn't it uh, all of a sudden you a had while. too many you had pardon well for a while it doesn't seem to have come back really well at least in these parts well everything is relative the guys are still working and doing fine right so you can't for it's rather like a we are you are you a veteran no. Okay, no, well, it's, it's kind of like a war, you see. The war is as big as the hole you're in. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, just... Or, well, during the Depression, there were people that made millions. Right. During the Great Depression, there was no depression for them, was there? Right. When you get laid off, it's a, re a depression. When I get laid off, for your point of view, maybe it's a recession, you see. <laughs> well, the answer is to be, be, to be as a broad a person as you can possibly be. Look into new areas. Start training yourself in new areas. That's the parachute. Okay. I well, wish you well, kid. Mind. Thanks a lot. You're very welcome. Cincinnati, hello there. Um, I, I've got a question I wanted to ask you about a, a lot split up. You mean a subdivision? And, uh, hello? It's called subdividing, right? Yes, exactly. Subdividing, okay. a, a minor subdivision. All right. And it's a, specifically a question has to do with uh, capital gains. Um, it's a little difficult. I, I got your partner confused. You're going to confuse me too, but that's all right. Go for it. Hopefully not. Um, I have a an older house on a five-acre lot. Mm -hmm. What I want to do is build a house on the back of my property. 
Right. In order to get the money that I need to build that house, what I want to do is divide the total five acres into three pieces. One piece would be the one new... Piece re one piece of the new, one piece retains the house you're on, and one you're going to sell. Exactly. Okay. And the question, I think it's pretty straightforward. When I, when I sell my house and move to the new one I'm going to build, my understanding is I can defer the gain from that. The question is... For no, the hold up, making the assumption that the house that you are going into is equal or greater value. Yes. Okay. Yes. The question is, uh, on the lot that I also split out and sell within the, hopefully the same time period, but probably to a different person, the question is, would that be viewed as um, something I have to pay capital gains on? I would think so. That would be, but you see, how do we determine the capital gain in this? You paid how much for the whole proposition? About 150000 All right. Now, how much of that could be legitimately allocated to the building and the acre what, oh, let's, no, hold, it. Back, hold it, hold it, back up. What is the minimum lot size in your area currently where this property is situated? 20,000 square feet. Half an acre, round numbers. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's right. Okay, so you can, you can legitimately parcel off a half acre or maybe a little more. That's right. For the, for the homestead. When we get back, we'll talk about it. I didn't realize we were bumped up against the clock. Stick around. I'm Bruce Winters. This is TalkNet. I am chatting with a gentleman in Cincinnati. He has a five-acre parcel. He wants to wrap it up into three pieces. That's assuming that the zoning and uh, the frontages and all that kind of stuff all conform. That's no big deal. One, he is going to keep for his present homestead. The second, he is going to build a new house on and then sell off his present homestead and then roll that into the uh, new purchase, but the third one, he's going to sell off immediately to raise cash. Is that the size of it? That's what I want to do, yeah. And uh, the question is, do I have to pay capital gains on that? Well, the big thing is, how much can you apportion into the into your current house? What it comes down to, you see, you got a base someplace in here. Right. What'd you pay for this whole this whole thing? About one hundred fifty thousand. All right, <clears throat> that that's your base. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the trick is to apportion as much of the base to your spinoff and the least amount of your base to your homestead because you're going to protect that anyway. Right. Well, that's up to your accountant to be a little creative. Yeah. I talked to him about it, and uh, he said I should base it on my real estate, real estate tax, property tax assessments in terms of the percentage of land and building. Well, but what that does that's, is, pretty, that's pretty conservative. Yeah, that's, point what, of view. that's what I thought. Do you have a suggestion with regard to that? I mean, well, you can look. What's what is the penalty for being a little more adventuresome? I don't know. You get pay. You have to pay more taxes. That's all. So I risk being audited. And well, it's not I a question of audited. I mean, it's, it's just a question of the risk on that. Well, you can yes, you they may challenge your number, and you're going to have to find to have a real estate appraiser go with your number. Yeah. You said you had an old house there, right? Yeah. How old? Uh, very old. Uh, eighty-five years. All right, you're gonna, your That's position is, look, the house that's there now is worth is worth very little. Essentially, I bought land. Now, I'm going to give up, uh, how much How much is the big piece, the chunk you're going to get rid of? Uh, I want to sell one in minimal, it's half acre, and I want to sell the house on another half acre and keep four acres for myself. Boy, you, boy, you, you want an awful lot. Yeah, I'm greedy. Well, in that case, you're going to get hit to pay some taxes. Well, yeah, and the, the, yeah. Well, because you, you, you look, look, look at this way. You say you want to sell off a half acre. That's only one tenth of the property. Right. It's very low uh, cost basis, but its market value is probably around fifty or sixty. That hasn't. That, but you, we're not concerned about that. We're talking about the taxes. Well, what so I if would, you're only selling off a tenth, that you're, you're if, if you if you were allowed to take it straight across the line, you only have fifteen thousand dollar base. It means you have thirty five thousand dollars, and then they're not going to do that because you got an improvement. I guess I'm. I guess I'm missing something. The, the way I was thinking about, it, and you correct me if how I'm thinking wrong is, if I sell this side lot for sixty grand, for instance, yeah. and I'm in the twenty eight percent tax bracket, I'm going to basically have to pay a third of that in capital gains tax. That's that's how a third, I. Was a third of the sixty. Yeah. A little 20, less 000. than that. A little less than that. Yeah. Well, uh, if you include state taxes and everything. Well, you're, you're going to have maybe you can probably squeeze off ten thousand for a base. Right. 
Well, that's, that's if, if, if I use what my accountant said, it, my base would be like two or three thousand. Cause huh. you know, mm-hmm. and but I thought that since it all was part of my principal residence, and I'm going to basically no, get rid of it do, all. No, you can't do that. I can't. Not unless you do it the same day. Well, even then, you then you'd portion off very little for the spun off piece and the most into your. Uh, and you might have to do it with a third party. They look, you have to pay some taxes. I don't see how you can do it okay. otherwise. I thought because it was all being liquidated within a two-year period, the 24-month period, that you could argue that it's part of the residence. And uh, How could you argue that when you no longer have it? Well, it was part of your residence. What you're doing is you're selling it off. And you're to two different it. people. Well, that's true. If you sold it off to the same guy, it'd be a different matter. Well, okay. And if he sold it off then, but then he's going to have a problem with taxes. Okay, I understand. I think you're kind of looking to have it both ways. Yeah, well, isn't everybody? Isn't I suppose that's right. I... Uh, could could I could I ask you one more question along the same line, Bruce? Sure. Um, the, the next step for me is I, I need to get um, I've got a mortgage on the whole thing, and obviously I want to own the um, the land that I want to build on free and clear. Or I need to. Why? Um, what's that? Why? Well, because I'm going to build the house myself. Mm, okay. Or or working with relatives and so mm-hmm. on. Okay. Complicated. But anyway, I want to get it free and clear. The question I have is I'm going to be talking to them about a partial release of land for my mortgage. Mm-hmm. Is it possible to, um, on on my existing house in this new lot that I want to sell, to take an existing mortgage and apply it to two separately deeded properties? But if you're going to support, you're going to start out looking for all new financing. That's what it comes down to. Now, the bank or the lender's concern is, is there enough in this property that we're loaning money against to satisfy the uh, uh, foreclosure if one were to take place? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the answer. Right. They may want me to put more money into it. Well, I don't know that. You see, we don't know what we're talking about here. Right. you've uh, You've got the existing house and the homestead, we'll call it, for the sake of discussion. Mm-hmm. How much is that worth right now? Probably about uh, uh, two eighty, three hundred thousand. 300000 And you only paid 150 the whole works? Mm-hmm. So you're telling me that on, those, on, on that piece of property, mm-hmm. how much do you owe right now? Um, 97. 100 round numbers. Mm-hmm. You're telling me you got $180,000 equity in the house. Did you say 180 or 280? You said 280. Didn't you? 280. All right, you got 180 thousand dollars worth of equity there, then, right? In terms of market value for the whole property. No, a minute. No, I didn't ask you that. Oh. That wasn't the question I asked you. I said I the, the the house plus a half acre homestead. Yeah, probably probably um, 140. All right, then you got a 40 thousand dollar right equity there. Right. So you're not going to get a whole lot on that. Right. And banks are not in the habit of loaning money on vacant property. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, but if I was willing, if I was willing to invest, put more cash into it, is it possible to have the existing mortgage applied to two separate two? Not the two. No, you, you're going to get a separate. You'll have to get a construction loan over the, on the on the piece you're building. Yeah. No, I understand that. But on the two pieces that I want to sell out, my my existing house and the lot right beside it. What I'm trying to explain to you is that they more ordinarily lenders will not loan money on unimproved property. Yeah. Do you see why? Do you know why? It eats. Yeah. It's got a well. You say yeah. It's well, it eats. It had produ- What income does an unimproved piece of property? What potential nothing. income? Nothing. No, nothing. It's a liability. That's right. correct. Right. Banks are not in the habit of loaning money against liabilities. Yeah, I guess why I'm confused is I have a mortgage right now on my house. You have a, a mortgage on your house on the entire property. Right. Well, that's that's pretty common, isn't it? Right. But you want to make it uncommon. You want to cut off, you want to subdivide some pieces off. Right. And then get a mortgage on the subdivided pieces. No, I want to, I want to keep the mortgage on the house. I understand that. And, I mean, and just you, pay them some more money because of I'm releasing some of the land. You don't have to do that. If, if the equity is, you told me a minute ago. Now, correct me. 
that a half acre and the house would currently in today's market appraise conservatively for 140 or thereabouts. Right. And you only owe 100. Right. Well, the bank in all likelihood would allow you to have a new mortgage at today's rates on the acre, on the half acre of the house. Right. The rest of the property is released. That's what I don't want. I, I want to keep my rate that I have. Well, I don't. Boy, you're a great one for keeping you. No, it ain't going to happen that way. Oh, okay. So you don't think they're going to re they won't release it? No. Um, at the Not, rate that I have. No, why should they? What's in it for them? Uh, they keep, keep a good customer. Oh, who keep... needs you as a customer? Come on. <laughs> I'm too hard, huh? <laughs> I'm serious. I don't mean that pejoratively, but... Well, apparently they do it all... I mean, they in their literature, they do it all the time. They do partial release of land. Well, maybe they do. If it, that's what they say. I mean, if I were sitting on a bank board... Mm -hmm. You wouldn't do it. Give me a, What's in it for me? To keep you as a customer? What else is in it for me? I got much... I got a better shot right now if you go bad than I will next week if you want to do what you want to do. Why should I do that? Particularly, particularly if, if this loan is on my shelf, what interest rate? Oh, the seven, seven, eight. Why would I want to do that? Would I can get 9% from my money today? Maybe. I mean, what do you mean maybe? I mean, they can, but it's, you know, every client's important. Every <laughs> customer's important. I... My point is, what is in it for me? Yeah. You haven't answered the question. Well, they're, st they're still making money on, on my loan. Oh, but why should I... Re now, you know, I don't think you get the picture. Why should I have a less secure loan with no more profit? Um, well... To keep you happy. That is not a good enough answer. Yeah. Now, if you were sitting on a 12... If you were on a 12% mortgage, I might want to keep you happy. <laughs> but not a not a... You see, I, I think you understand what I'm, where I'm coming from. I do wish you well, Guy. I'm Bruce Williams. This is TalkNet. Oklahoma City. So my goodness, I may reach puberty here. Oklahoma City, hello there. Hi, good evening, Bruce. Thank you so much for taking my call. Well, I'm glad you're with me, my friend. What can we do for you? I've been listening to you for years, and I've always appreciated your common sense approach to problem solving. I, uh, I was involved in an accident uh, a couple weeks ago. I was rear-ended. Uh, quite severely, it uh, totaled out my 1988 Buick Park Avenue. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, uh, it uh, kind of stretched and uh, severely hurt my old bones and muscles. Uh -huh. I uh, uh, went to the doctor for uh, three different visits, and uh, now just in the last couple of days, I've been able to get back into my exercise routine on my exercise machine mm -hmm. and uh, feeling like I'm getting back to, uh, to my old normal self. The insurance company asked me uh, what I'd be willing to settle for. And I said, uh, well, I'm going to have to get back with you on that. I have no permanent injuries. I, mm -hmm. I merely suffered uh, some fairly good pain for the last two weeks. Well, that's not worth much. Not worth much. No, sir. Okay. How much were your medical bills? Uh, about uh, $800. Uh, if, you, if, they, if they come up with 2500 I think you're probably doing pretty well. Okay. If, if that. If that. Uh-huh. And thankfully... Oh, sure. I, I agree with that. Uh, in fact, uh, my family has been uh, cautioning or trying to get me to go to an attorney. And, uh, you, they, you know, people have, people, for, and this is wrong. Mm -hmm. They see, as soon as somebody gets hurt, they see dollar signs. Oh, yeah. man, we're going to sue that sucker. We're going to go. Well, but, but you're, more, I think, sounding a little more realistic. Uh -huh. nothing, nothing serious happened to you. That's correct. Well, nothing serious. You got, you got paid for your car. Or you will get paid for your car. Well, I'm going to have some financial loss there, but... Well, there always right. is. You're saying the car is worth more than it, than it is. Well, naturally. And <laughs> well, don't we all? Yeah, right. But the realities are that your body came out pretty good. Yeah, that's right. I wouldn't... Uh, I, I don't see any reason to get an attorney. Okay. I don't think, I don't think you're going to add a third or more to the to the uh, award by hiring an attorney. And you know I believe in using attorneys when they're required. Uh, have they made any kind of an offer to you at all? No, they have not. Uh, have yeah. you have you tried to to uh, have them uh, settle with you? No, as a matter of fact, I never mentioned it at all, uh, all right. until they uh, they asked me. I think asking for three thousand probably settle for two twenty five hundred uh, something like that. Okay, I think that's you know, again. It, yeah, you have a little discomfort, but I mean, hey, that's not the end of the world. Oh, that's true. Did you miss a lot of work? 
No, I missed no work at all. I'm retired. Uh, oh, what okay. I really missed was a, an awfully good uh, Christmas with my grandkids, and my son oh. just returned from uh, the Marine Corps after five years. Mm -hmm. And I, I really didn't get as much enjoyment out of that as I should have. Well. But other than that. Uh, pretty hard to put a price on that stuff. Well, it is nearly impossible. I hear you. I'm glad you weren't more seriously injured, my friend. Have a great year. Elmira, New York. Hello there. How you doing? I'm doing real well, thank you. I've got a, uh, I think a quick one for you. I um, went to a furniture store shopping around for some New Year's sales today. Uh, picked out a piece of furniture that I thought I'd like to acquire. Uh, paid cash for it. And got home. Did a little adding and subtracting and figured out that I probably should have spent a little less on a piece of furniture than what I spent. <laughs> so, a little buyer's remorse is striking, yeah, huh? Yeah. So we had seen a couple of pieces of furniture at some other stores that were a bit more in our price range. And uh, we talked about maybe going back and asking for our money back and going somewhere else. Although I don't like to do that, that's what I figured I'd do. Mm -hmm. Pulled out the sales receipt, uh, which I have. Mm -hmm. And I have not picked up the I have not picked up the furniture yet either. Let me just make that note. I'm I plan to pick it up tomorrow night uh, with my vehicle and bring it home. So it's still at the store. Uh, they're mm -hmm. scotch guarding it or something, and then I'm going to pick it up tomorrow. All right. Um, the receipt says all sales final, no exchanges, no refunds. Well, that's the deal. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I thought that um, in some in some cases, if you make a large enough purchase, you've got you've got enough time to change your mind. No, you do not. Not under well, yes, you do. If they came to your home and sold you the furniture, you'd have three business days. Okay, but you went to them. True. To their showroom. I don't see. You. I think you're going to enjoy your furniture. I hope you do. Okay. Uh, is there anything in a, as far as a good business sense? Would it uh, make sense for them at all to to think about you finding that if I haven't taken delivery of it yet? Let me ask you a question. What are the chances of you going back there and buying something else if you took all this money back from them? Oh, I think I would. I think I would if I, if I needed something besides a couch. Someday, maybe. Yeah. From their point of view, they took the time and effort to sell you something. They gave you a receipt that said this is the, this is the final sale. What's in it for them to get? You see, you'd say from a business point of view, the chances of somebody coming back after they've done that are pretty slim. Now, they might if they said you could apply it towards something else. That would not be unreasonable, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's something else you want, you know, two chairs instead of a couch. I think that would be, assuming they haven't done anything dramatic to it, you know, to, to customize it for you. Right. But, but but what's there for them to kill a sale? They spent time and effort with you, and they sold you something, and you paid for it. Okay. Well, I just want to see if I had anything going, but uh, obviously I need to enjoy the furniture then. I would enjoy the furniture. Is there something else you want to buy in that same store we'd rather buy? Uh, well, no, not, what happened was, uh, we saw one or two pieces of furniture that met the style requirements we wanted for the house, and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to be honest, they didn't have anything, anything else that really fit the bill like this one. Unfortunately, it's, uh, it's about $200 more than I wanted to spend. Well, I wouldn't lose too much sleep over that. Yeah. Okay. I, I do wish you well. Enjoy the couch, kid. I'm Bruce Williams. This is TalkNet. <laughs> Holiday, Florida. Welcome to my world. Hey, Bruce, how are you? I'm real well, thank you. Uh, Happy New Year to you. Thank you, you and yours. Thank you. I've been listening to you for about two years now, and you've gotten kind of concerned about um, a whole life policy insurance that I have. It's uh, it's up to $100,000, and uh, basically I just have it on myself. I got it before I got married, and I've been kind of concerned whether debating uh, just to get term life or to keep this whole life policy uh, and I don't know if it would... How long have you had the policy? I've had it um, for eight years now. I'd probably hang on to it. Would you? Yeah, at this point. Okay. Um, uh, for my wife now, I don't know how long... Uh, I don't have any insurance on her. Well, first of all, let's, let's do, we only have a relatively short amount of time. Yeah, I understand. Why do, you, why do you think you need insurance on you? Why do you think you need it on your wife? Uh, well, to protect our children. All right, that's a good answer. All right, now how old are your children? Uh, Quickly. Ranging from 18 months to uh, 13 years. How many kids? Uh, there's four of us. All right. How much do you earn? Uh, about 32000 a year. And, and my wife, about another eighteen. All right. 
So if you're out of the picture, thirty-two grand goes away. The family has a bit of a problem, don't they? Oh yes. So we want to find a, try to provide a little money that can provide that thirty-two thousand, which looks like about four hundred grand, maybe. If you wanted to, if but not even there, you're going to be eating the principal. That's okay. Right. Do you smoke? No. Good shape. Oh yes. Health wise. I'm perfect. Uh, you could you could pick up. How old are you now? Thirty-one. You could pick up four hundred thousand dollars with insurance. Pretty and keep the hundred you got. He'll give you half a million, or maybe buy three and a half hundred thousand, something of that nature. Same now with your wife; she has no insurance, right? Right. A couple hundred thousand, maybe two and a half hundred thousand of term. Five-year renewable term should be relatively reasonable. Are you renewable? Okay. Wonderful. I mean, all you're buying is protection here. Now, exactly. We could talk, we could talk about the savings aspect, but right now, I think that's probably pretty tough. Yeah. yeah right it now, is. <laughs> right now, what we're trying to do is protect in case one or the other of you are not in the picture. Now, I could be a little bit off on the amounts, but I'd be looking for five-year uh, guaranteed renewable convertible term. Okay. And somewhere in the amounts that I described should be about right. Guaranteed renewable. Well, thank you, Bruce, very much. I, I do wish you well, my Happy. friend. Dallas Riggin. Oh, he's in uh, oh, master control tonight. Yeah, let me see. There's Mr. Dan Dan Rudd. All the D's here. Dean Everett twisting the dials. And finally, Paul Hill, our operations manager. Good guys to work with. Good guys to start up this new year. Hope your new year is everything you want it to be. Try and do what's right, kids. It's not easy. I'm Bruce Williams. Keep in touch. Seattle, Washington. Hello there. Welcome to my world. Hi, Bruce. Hello, it's sweetie. It's to talk to you. Well, I'm so pleased that you <laughs> called. What can I do for you? Um, my first question to you is, we've been on vacation, and... Was your home or your business damaged by the hurricane? No, ma'am. We were unscathed. However, the millions of people, certainly not millions of dollars, billions of dollars, and, and thousands of people were, were discombobulated. Unhappily, some were killed. And uh, hopefully, we're, we're trying to help out a little bit. And I'd like you to listen to our second hour of the program, okay? Can, I don't know when this is going to be uh, on the air or when I'll be able to hear it. Could you well, give me the phone number so I can write it down before I can send some... Funds. Well, I will talk to you. I, I really don't want to get into that this hour, oh, okay. but I'll do this for you. I will have one of our staff call you back if you leave a number. Very good. Okay. I will do that because I would like to... Uh, send okay. Some, okay. Now, this is my question, Bruce, and I've, I've listened to you for umpteen years, and you've always said if anything is sounds like it's too good to be true, it probably is... It probably is. A I think that's a pretty fair <laughs> statement. Yes. However, this is one of those. Uh, it is a, one of those camp resort deals that you go and listen to their presentation, which we did, mm -hmm. and we're supposed to get three days and two nights in exciting Reno for two. Three. <laughs> three days and two nights in where? In Reno. Yeah, it's a nice town. It is. It, it's great. We love it. My question to you is: Have you heard? Any negative reports on Yes, ma'am. What you're probably going to be... Th what, what's going to happen? They're going to pitch you like you haven't been pitched. We've already been pitched. <laughs> they're going to pitch you again, I would imagine. We've, we've got the certificate to send in, and it says to send in $85 per No, nah, stop right there. If you got to send any money, forget about it. I see. Forget see, about it. We'll probably never see the money or the... Well, the thing the is, they're, they're not giving you transportation, are they? Yes, they are. Air, they're going to yeah. give you airfare? Airfare and two nights in a motel. That's and they fair. gave you that just for listening to the pitch. That's right. It says round trip airfare and accommodations two nights and a tour of different casinos. I don't believe it. Well, I can't either. I That's the reason it. I wanted to call you. To well, you, you, now you went to the pitch and you didn't buy anything, right? That's right. But they did give us a certificate to... Uh, but uh, but you got to pay $85. It says, uh, yeah, you got to send 85 a piece. Oh, a piece. But it says refundable deposit. You know, refundable on what basis? <laughs> I don't know, Bruce. I mean, <laughs> from, maybe you know. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'd call them and ask. Uh, Seattle is not exactly a long way to Reno. Well, this it, the place is down in Encino, California, but I can call down there. Mm -hmm. I'll call and find out. I would do so, but I am very skeptical of these promotions. Ordinarily, the time they get done with you, nickel and dime you, you could have done it for yourself for less money with a ton less aggravation. And, and at least you know what you were getting. Exactly so. Bruce, I appreciate. I would like to have you please. All right, I want you to hold. I want you to hold on for just a moment. Real good. I appreciate right. that. And uh, we'll put you on hold and we'll tell you the address. Okay. So incidentally, you have a lot of a lot of listeners in Seattle. 
Well, I hope so. Thank you very much. People in Seattle have been very gracious to me, and I appreciate that. There's a bunch of people. You hang on now. Okay, I will. I'm Bruce Williams. Stick around for more. This is TalkNet. TalkNet. 1-800-743-8000. What's going on in Los Angeles, California? Hello there. Hello, Bruce. Hi, guy. I love your show. You're one in a billion. Well, thank you very much. You're very gracious. I have a problem, as you probably know. I have a uh, four uh, negotiable promissory notes at the value of four, uh, for two hundred thousand dollars. You mean face value? Yeah, face value of the note. Yeah, who are the notes? I don't mean individual. Who uh, gave them to you? Some friend or a business? No, there are three uh, three different people of uh, of a business of business. They they dealt in real estate. Yeah. Real estate out here uh, is bad. This is not an unlimited partnership or unlimited partnership, but it's just a note with their signatures on it. Well, what was the reason they gave you the note? I gave them $200,000 uh, four different times, uh, a total of uh, $200,000. And for what purpose? Was it? Um, well, they were paying me quarterly interest rates for the last couple of years, and then real estate got bad. and. Uh, they How about principal? Do they return any principal? They no principal, it... just interest. And then what interest rate were they paying you? Thirteen percent. Uh huh. But anyway, uh, which is a mistake. But anyway, uh, question I have is that uh, I went to a collection agency, and uh, in order them for them to collect, you know, they take twenty percent if there's no court costs. Uh, Sometimes a lot more. Pardon. And many times more. Yeah, they said that they have to well, go to court. It's but we kind of skipped ahead a little bit, didn't we? Did we? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you went from they were paying interest, and then what happened? The interest stopped coming? Oh, they defaulted uh, on all four of these notes on August 1st. Oh, well, you didn't say that. Oh, I'm sorry. That's yeah. okay. Hey, listen, when you have 200 grand at stake, I can appreciate why you may be a little bit uh, discombobulated. <laughs> That's All right, so they de they defaulted, and, and def being in default is not necessarily uh, the end of the world. If you're five minutes late with a mortgage payment, technically, you're in default. Right. But I take it since August, we haven't... Well, August is only a month ago. Right, it's only a month ago. Uh, no, wait a minute. Have, uh, have we discussed this with them since yes, then? Yes, I went to the office there on Monday, and yeah. uh, I know they're having real estate problems. They had bought... They had one of the... Properties they had was worth seven million dollars, one hundred forty-nine thousand, one hundred forty-nine units, and they were going to a bank to try to uh, what they do, cram down the loan, I believe it is, mm -hmm. or crunch down type of thing. Yeah, and what happened? Uh, I don't know. I won't know until tomorrow. But I got a note uh, about an hour ago in the mail. I just got home. It says another letter will be sent to you in approximately four weeks, as we are in the process of working a plan to resolve the payment of your note, and I have four of them totaling. Two hundred thousand dollars. Anyway, my question is, I really don't know. I talked to this one attorney, and uh, for advice, and he was saying that uh, you can go on an hourly basis, and it'll probably uh, be about ten to twenty thousand dollars to uh, handle it. And well, what is he? What is it that he's going to do for you? Well, try to collect. You see. Uh, well, I'm, it may be a little premature. You think it's premature? I know. I didn't say that. I right. said it may be. Right. A little premature. You'd have to know a little bit more about the circumstances. Uh -huh. uh, my, I think before I went out and engaged an attorney and, and, and spent considerable sums of money or turned it over to a collection agency, I'd do a couple of other things, first of all. First thing I'd do is go out and talk to these guys. Which I did. And I'd like to, th I'd like a, a, to find out exactly what they're up to and uh, I'd like more detail as to their finances. Uh-huh. Because it may well be that there is merit in starting a suit, if only to establish your place in line. Right. But the other side of that is, if enough people establish their places in line, they, you may force them into it, at the very minimum, a Chapter 11, and possibly into a 7, which is uh -huh. to no one's advantage. Right. In a Chapter 7, the chances are that you guys will get a... Well, I don't know how, how much they have in the way of assets... Uh, clearly their assets, well not clearly, it's very likely their assets uh, do not equal their liabilities. Their assets have depreciated because of the declining real estate market. Right. And their liabilities have not declined in the slightest because they've been paying interest only. Right. 
I, so I think you would think I, I should wait a little bit to see what happens? No, I didn't say that. I said I'd go down and talk to them. I want some details of their... their say, look, fellas, I'm going to lay it right on the line. I don't want to exacerbate what apparently is a bad position, bad situation. On the other side of that, I clearly have my first obligation is to me. Right. To get whatever done, whatever is done, has, whatever has to be done to protect my interests. Now, what that requires is a certain amount of candor from you guys. I want right. to know where we're going, where you are. Now, you can expect a lot of smoke, let's face it. Uh-huh. You can expect some smoke. Now, if you don't understand what they've had to say, you might talk to that same attorney or another or an accountant with whom you have a good deal of, of rapport and trust because it's a little harder to get past them because that's their stock and trade. It's not yours and it's not mine. Right. After you've listened to these explanations, if they seem to have some credibility, then you may want to give them 30 day, whatever the number is. Right. If they appear to have no credibility, if in fact they appear to uh, have have no re no no realistic uh, what's the term I'm searching for uh, chance of coming about, then. I would think you might want to start your suit. But there's no point in, in spending a ton of money before you know where you are. I'd make the first trip myself. If they persuade you and you understand what they're talking about and they back it up with, with hard, concrete information, that's one thing. If they don't, bang, attorney's office. If you don't understand, that is not a disgrace. What is a disgrace is to be afraid or, or reluctant to admit that you don't understand. Uh -huh. Then you grab the appropriate professional, or maybe both, both an attorney and an accountant, to go down and talk to them. You say, look, I just don't understand. You may be right, but I want somebody else to come down and look at these at, at these documents. All right? right. Then, if these guys say, look, they're blowing smoke in your face, we should establish ourselves, or they may say, yeah, this makes a lot of sense. Let's give them sixty days, or whatever it happens to be. But I take the approach and the sequence I, as I've described it. Okay. I do wish you will, my friend. And if, can I ask one, one quick question? Another time, my friend. I'm out of time. I'm Bruce Williams for TalkNet. We're going to Fort Pierce, Florida. Hello there. Hi. Hi, oh, Bruce. Hi there. Um, I'm a little nervous. Not to be nervous, Not lady. To be. I've heard you say that many times. Well, it's true. What two friends talking on the telephone? Clearly, what is to be nervous about? Well, you're somebody, and I'm I'm just a person. Come on already. That's, <laughs> that is that is probably you're a nobody. I know that. I, I hope you're a nobody because that's what all my listeners are called, aren't it? It's Bruce Williams, nobody. So okay. from that perspective, great. Okay. But but do you ever listen to the things I say at the beginning of the show, the monologue? Yeah. Well, one of the things I, I say regularly, because I believe this, is that everybody is special and different. And the whole world is out there to tell you, you are nobody. That's why I keep calling you guys nobodies. You are special, you're different, and you're important. Don't you ever let the world tell you differently. I'll try. What's on your mind, baby? Well, my husband owned or owns a mobile home in Fort Pierce. All right. An older one. Mm-hmm. Uh, he sold it to a friend from New Jersey. Oh, i got to watch those people from New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> We're both from New Jersey. Okay, go ahead. So was I. Okay. All right. So, uh, anyway, uh, the friend gave him half of the money as a down payment. All right. With the, the uh, stipulation that he would pay monthly. Pay, he would pay the rent, and he would give... Well, what, you mean the you mean the property rent? You only sold the mobile home. It's on a, on a lot of some kind. Right. He would in. pay the property rent, and then he would give us, uh, I think, two hundred and twenty a month. All right. And how much was the balance when this deal was struck? How much was the balance bill? <laughs> I don't know. How much did you sell it for? Uh, he sold it for seventy five hundred. And he got half down. Yeah. Well, that's thirty five hundred in my book. Okay. I'm not good with figures. Anyway. Well, I am with math and other kind of figures, so it's okay. <laughs> okay. Well, now, the man went back to New Jersey, and my husband and I rode over 
towards the to the mobile home, mm -hmm. and there's a bunch of cars out there, and we figured, oh, somebody's having a party. Well, we walked on in, knocked, and then invite were invited in, mm -hmm. and he has sublet the mobile home, right? And they are to pay him, and. Uh, well, here's the question, you see. Did he say, you said at the top of our conversation, and it may not have been the best choice of terms, or it might have been completely accurate. You said we sold him the mobile home. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, did the t then, then did you take the title and put the title in his name? No, my husband still has title to it. Well, then you didn't sell him the mobile home. Okay. What you did was you entered into some kind of a contract to sell it to him when it was paid for. Mm -hmm. But your husband still has title to it. What, right. sh what probably should have been done was the title should have been transferred to the friend mm -hmm. and then you taken a lien on the property. Okay. That would have been, the, the I think, the more traditional way. Okay, now you object to them leasing the house? Well, we, we feel that if, uh, if anything happens, we are responsible. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Now, for example, I mean, we're, we are chuckling, but I'm going to maybe blast the chuckle. Okay. When you made the arrangement with your buddy, yeah. did you insist that he carry liability insurance? Uh, Is it in the agreement? My husband dropped his insurance. That wasn't what and I asked. We told, and we told the man to get insurance. Is it in the agreement? It isn't in, it was just a verbal agreement. Well, you see, you don't do deals like this verbally. It should have been in writing and in proper legal form in conformance with the laws of Florida. That's just, that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. Well, have we contacted this guy? Well, he, Have you called the guy in New Jersey and said, uh, Yes, and we got in touch with his girlfriend. Well, that, and, I mean, uh, you, you haven't talked to him. No, we haven't. She what said, did the girlfriend say? You know, there's always an excuse that he's not around. Well, the first thing your husband should do tomorrow morning is take out a liability insurance policy. Okay. Second thing you ought to do is take out a fire policy. Okay. Because the liabilities are more important. Mm -hmm. Because if something happens, absolutely, guess who's wood they're going to come wrapping on? That's it. That's You're, what I'm afraid of. Well, you don't have to be. You can be assured of it. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid. Be assured. <laughs> and the policy should cover renters. Okay. Because your husband still is technically the owner. Not technically, he is, he the, is owner. the owner. That's right. He, in turn, is in, the, in a contract for sale with this other guy. And I would write, is he getting his payments on time? Uh, now, that's another problem. No, that's, just, that's, that's probably part of the same problem. Yeah. Is he getting his payments? No, he isn't. In that case, he wants to, what he wants to do is see an attorney for this verbal agreement. I'm not sure how you're going to handle this and foreclose on this guy. I mean, I don't need, I'm not even certain how you foreclose on a note where the security has not changed hands. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't even know if it's necessary. As a matter of fact. Well, we were wondering if, if uh, you know, these people are there and what can we do? And Well, you see, we, you've got a very convoluted environment here. Part of the problem is that your husband really didn't legally as i can see it sell the motor ho the the mobile home mm -hmm. he accepted a payment he has a verbal contract mm -hmm. but that's not a sale because it's still in his name and obviously anything that happened i, I assume that the lease with the mobile home park is probably still in his name too yes your husband's name i think it is. yeah probably is and now the guy is in default but what's he in default of i don't know if that's considered rent Payments, it would if there were property involved, it would be analogous or it could be a, what's called a contract for deed. That's pretty convoluted. Tell you what, maybe I can find an attorney. And I, I have to admit, we have a brand new expert number, which I do not have. So if somebody would be kind enough to tell me what that number is, I would be very happy to pass it along. Anybody up there? Going, it's a 703 number. What is our expert number, please? Somebody in my earmuffs almost instantly. 703. Okay. 685.
2081. That's 703-685-2081. If you're an expert, if you're an attorney. Okay. How, no, this, you want you to listen, dear. We're going to put you on hold. Okay. If you're an attorney, my number is 703-685-2081. What is the relationship here, and how does one extricate oneself? Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear from you. I'm Bruce Williams. Okay. This is TalkNet. All righty, do we have an expert? And if we do, would somebody advise me? We do not? That's terrible. Hey, I need a, an attorney in a rush. Now, you guys heard this soliloquy. I'll repeat it. Fellow makes a, a, a verbal deal to sell a mobile home. 7K. It's 3500 down. Verbal. Mobile home is still in his name. He, the lot lease is still in his name. The uh, buyer is a friend. He's going to pay him $200 plus dollars a month. He splits, takes off from New Jersey, and rents the place to somebody else. Now he's in default on his payments. He hasn't making his payments. Well, under, ord in, in ord under ordinary conditions, it would be pretty simple if, they, if he had uh, transferred the property and so forth, or the, or the mobile home, but he has not. But what is his redress? St. Louis, your turn. Yeah, Bruce. Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm an attorney in St. Louis. I just... Had a couple comments on this situation. Go um, for it. I, I appreciate the help. Sure. If there's not a contract there, you know, either for rent or for sale, uh, in Missouri here, we would file a suit for ejectment. And well, hold on. Hold on now. He did give $3,500 as a down payment, which is 50%. Okay. And was but it, there is no con. And then, then this is essentially a vehicle, not a piece of property. Yeah, that's right. Because it's a, a mobile home, on a, on a, and there is no real property in this transaction. Yeah, well, that, I think they would probably still have a right to file this ejectment action, saying I have a right to possess that vehicle. Well, I mean, but the problem there is, I, as I see it, Counselor, and please, and, and I, I'm, not, I'm not quarreling, I'm trying to get it clear in my own mind. Sure. Uh, the, the title never changed hands. Well, that's what I'm saying. If they still have the title, they, all, they, all they're saying in an ejectment suit... Oh, it's eviction, you mean? No, no, it's, it's actually a, it's a special form of a suit called ejectment. Could you spell it for me, please? J E C T M E N T. Ejectment. Okay, I'm right. not familiar with the term. Right. It's a, it's real specialized, and it only comes up in those kind of situations where someone is in uh, another person's property, and there was no uh, no relationship there, essentially. Well, what they did was they had leased it from the guy who was supposedly buying it, but still in his buddy's name. I mean, talk about you know they 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 probably would find it difficult to screw up more badly. It would seem to me. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I heard I heard a part of the uh, a part of her description, but uh, if there was this written contract for the sale of the trailer, uh, there was no written contract. Well, I, I would if I were them, I would just pursue this ejectment action, and if they have to get some sort of refund on it as, as a part of the, the remedy, then do it. But uh, you know, there may not be; they may not have to give a refund. Well, he's off in New Jersey. The trailer is in Florida, right. and he's behind in his payments. On a verbal, on a verbal contract, on merchandise which is still in the in the seller's name, I would, on I would, leased uh, property in the in the seller's name. I would say uh, if it's just a sale of this of this trailer and they've fallen behind, I would file the ejectment suit and let it take its course. I see. And, and they can get them out of there, and then they can deal with the issue of whether or not there's any money owed back to these folks on this oral contract. I mean, obviously, you know, on, on any kind of real estate, you have to have a written contract. But in a trailer, if that's considered some sort of chattel or a real well, property. You know, I think in, in most jurisdictions, it would be considered probably come under the motor vehicle right. laws. Right. It would can be considered personal property. In most right. Places. So uh, I would say just file the ejectment to get them out because it, it would be considered uh, the equivalent of, of a home. Or an apartment or that sort of thing. So I think an ejectment suit is the way to but go. But then would we, beyond that, then, would we have an obligation to the guy who put the down payment since he is in default? If he isn't, well, of course, of course, normally that's covered by whatever type of agreement you have. If you don't have... Right, we don't, have, we don't right. have an agreement. Right, and obviously, so it's a case of, of the court of court of equity would decide, uh, could decide what to do with that. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, Boy, it certainly underscores. Uh, you know, when you have when you have a toothache, go to a dentist. When you have a real problem, you go to an attorney. Right. Well, in fact, I would think that there would be a forfeiture on by the person who put the money down. Normally, that's what would occur, uh -huh. you know, unless the contract would specify otherwise. Yeah. So <laughs> we don't have one of those. <laughs> Counselor, I do wish you well. Thanks very much for helping. I really appreciate it, and I hope my friend in Fort Pierce was was listening to that. 
what you really ought to consider is, is getting counsel now and learning from the lesson when you're selling stuff like that for these kind of numbers it doesn't have to be in a 17 page uh, legal description but there should be a contract that is binding that spells out responsibilities and the privileges of both sides it's just a sensible way to go Tailua, hawaii hello there hi bruce how are you i am just fine thank you i have a real estate question <clears throat> i have two residential rental properties Worth about, uh, on the market, I think, about $600,000, all right? Mm -hmm. Now, according to you, I ought to be getting $6,000 gross uh, every month. Is that correct? At a minimum. Uh, well, I'm getting about half that. Well, in that case, you could put your money into a treasury instrument and get better return without any risk. Well, uh, except that I've had these for quite a long time, and there's a huge capital gains tax right. involved. Okay. I figure I could net if I sold them after sales expenses and do you, taxes. No, can, can I, do, you, do you have any um, mortgage on these properties? No, they're both they're, free. And they're debt free and they're worth six hundred grand. Go ahead. Right. I figure I might net four hundred fifty thousand dollars at best. That's after the tax obligations and the sell expenses of sale. All right. So you got four and a half hundred thousand. Right. So that's going to be, in, you, you, it, it, even at today's miserable rates, you're talking about uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 25000 a year, 24000 a year in your pocket. What are you putting in your pocket now? After all of 24, your... 24000 exactly, as a matter of fact. Okay. And you have, but, you, but you also have the hassle of being a landlord. You have the, yeah. pos you have the possibility of, of something happening to the property, a bad tenant uh a bad you know bad piece of weather all that sort of thing for yes. a very modest well, although right now i have good tenants uh-huh and the other side of that is that and this may be not the case in hawaii which is a bit atypical is the property still appreciating or is it no ever? it is not appreciating one of them is in california as a matter of fact uh -huh, that's boy. another item uh, -huh. uh that's probably gone down the one in hawaii is steady well, I see no, absolutely no, no benefit to you to staying in a real estate business. Maybe you can see one that I don't see. Well, of course, I'm probably uh, the past has been so profitable. Yeah, but we've all one suffered. Is, we've suffered from that I'm, disease. Yeah, we, I know it. Has. But we've also, as you yeah. saw in California with your with your California property, what <laughs> goes up can go down, and what goes down can go down more. Now, given uh, the, the other gimmick is, is that I was hoping about was that the capital gains tax would be reduced. Well, that's that another matter. Like if it. Mr. Bush has his way, it may, may very well be reduced. Um, it just occurs to me that the, the capital gains tax is counterproductive. It, 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 and here's a, this is a perfect example. You're not a real wealthy guy, but you bought a couple of pieces of property, and they've done well for you. But the money is sitting there tied up, and if you were to go out and sell the property, the chances are that money would go back into the into the area of commerce. Now, it could be argued, yes, but more money will be borrowed uh, to purchase the property from you, and that's true, but that will generate a far higher rate of interest, and again, we're churning them. Which, that's, that's all the, that economy is about, is churning money. The country would be better off to encourage people like you to keep the stuff moving. If you sold the prop, if you sold the property, first of all, the real estate people are going to make some money, and they're going to pay some taxes, aren't they? Right. You're going to take the money and re and, and pay a substantial amount of taxes. Also yeah. true. The new guy that buy the guy that buys the thing is going to go into the money markets, and he is going to pay for money. On the lenders of that money will also pay taxes. The way it's going now, nothing's happening. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that this is why that I think people smarter than you or smarter than me are saying the capital gains tax does encourage activity. Well, and of course you have the de you have the demagogue saying, "Oh, it's only for the rich." Well, that's just not true. It's clearly not true, and that the middle class historically their biggest investment in the last century, no, make it the last half century has been their home. Yeah. 
Now, they give you the $125,000 exemption on the property you occupy, but clearly it's not enough. I do wish you well, my friend. Hey, I want to tell you, you I, you know why, guys, I mentioned, uh, mentioned, I talked a good deal about the Arab countries Monday evening and what I believe to be their responsibilities and asked you guys to, to do some stuff, call them. Well, I think you're going to be pleased with some of the results, and there's a long way to go. And after the top of this hour, I would urge you to hang around, have a friend or two. Uh, you might call them on the phone and say, uh, I'd like uh, you to listen. I am going to take very little time, four or five minutes at the outside, but I think you're entitled to be brought up to speed. I'm Bruce Williams. This is TalkNet. We're going out of Jacksonville, Florida. Hello there. Good evening, sir. Hi, Guy. How are you? Not too bad. I hope you're fine. Uh, my mom uh, purchased a house back in 1978 and uh, agreed this is through a friend. And there's very little paperwork that we can find on it. We're trying to piece this together. Right. But the best we have done is they've signed a 15-year mortgage being held by the lady that owned the house, which is a uh, very good friend of my mother's. Right. Was the mortgage filed? Yes, it was. Okay. The uh, when I say it, uh, let me put it this way. As far as I know, it was. We have a um, uh, record of deed transferring the property from the woman to my mother. Well, you said, where is this record? Uh, in upstate New York. No, no, no. I mean, where is it uh, in your in your possession? You mean? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, but was the was it, was it filed at the county courthouse? Yes, sir. It is. Okay, fine. Then it was a traditional fee simple sale. Yes, sir. Okay. And this is a quick claim deed for the property. No, no. Why? Why a quick claim deed? Uh, I have no idea. Well, that that would not be the way it's done. Now, what you're telling me is maybe the the the, the first person signed a quit claim, mm -hmm. and your mother was to pay her, but the property remained in her name, but she gave up all of her rights. Is that what happened? Yes, sir. That's what happened. What a screwball way to do things, huh? Yes, sir. It is. Yeah. Uh, and we're suffering for it now. I'm sure. Uh, uh, let me let me guess. Somebody's dead. Uh, no. No. Uh, both of them are alive. N neither one of them are um, able to remember the transaction. <laughs> well, they're dead then. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not. They're not. Well, hold on. Serious now. They are not uh, competent. Let's leave it. Put it that way. That's that's true. All right, but no no, no records. Uh, I mean, like I said, no records from either party can be found. How about records of payment? And None? that's what we're doing now. We're going through all of the um, uh, checks that we can find. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going back to the bank and having them research it as best they can. Well, they can only go back about seven years at the max. <clears throat> uh, then, then we definitely have a problem. The only, the only good uh, record of uh, transaction that we have is that every time a payment was made to the lady, she crossed it on uh, or crossed it off a direct reduction loan um, uh, copy uh, for... Uh, I understand. An amateurization table. Right. Yes, sir. So what does that show? Uh, it shows, according to her, that there's a, a 14 payments left. All right. Uh, but and the only problem fifth... is that the 14 payments, before the uh, 15 years kicked in, my mother made 10 payments of principal only. Principal only? Yes, sir. What an unusual arrangement that is. <laughs> And uh, what we wanted to find out, would this make any difference as far as the final payment on the 15-year loan? Well, I don't... It, it, yes, of course it would. There wouldn't be any final payment in all likelihood. Okay. The, the fact is that the chances are that your mother is ahead already because she reduced the mortgage payments, the principal amounts. Well, wait a minute. You say principal, it must have been a very tiny amount. Yeah, in other words, I'm, I'm sorry, What did I say principal? Yes, you did. I, I meant interest on it. Oh, it's a different matter. Yes, sir. All right, yeah, it would make, a, that means she'd owe a little more at the end, but not a whole lot, because at the beginning, how much was the original note? Uh, the original note was for $22,700. Right, so okay, so the principal, uh, at the at the outset, the monthly principal payments would have been very, very small. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm, so they I'm, have the the table here. It's one hundred and sixty dollars and seventy nine cents yeah, for was, interest. 
Right. Sixty two seventy five for principal. Yeah, that's for how long? Uh, for fifteen years. No, no. Oh, you mean every month? No, the month, the principal and the interest change every payment. Oh, yes, sir. That was for uh, one. Oh, month. no. For the first five, for the first ten payments, she how made much? Uh, she made more than the interest payment. She made more than. Yeah, it, according to this. She well, then made she made a part of the principal payments. Right. She made a hundred. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to get a couple of seconds. Sure. The difference is going to be so small; it's not worth arguing with the other party. Mm -hmm. uh, the the principal payments at the beginning of a 15-year loan are, are such an infinitesimal part of the total rent right. to be paid. If you said, look, we'll concede 300, you're, you're being very generous in what differences it make. Right. But I mean, it just this again, it underscores, and we're not talking about a whole long time ago. No. It, under, it underscores why it is so foolish to get into these convoluted, hey, we don't need any help routines. When all you do, all you do is wish a, a big problem on the people around you. That's exactly right. I wish you well, my friend. I'm Bruce Williams. This is TalkNet. Getting service. Well, those things happen. Is there a, a statute of limitation? Has no, there's, no, not in this case because there's nothing to limit. Uh huh. There has been there, there has been no relationship between you and these guys. Mm -hmm. Period. It's a hundred and five dollars. No, it's a hundred and five nothing. Because they performed a service that you neither asked for, contracted for, or obligated to pay. Uh -huh. Now, there's no other way I can can tell you that you don't have you don't owe them a dime. No, no, Not we've a, gotten into arguments with them several times. Well, there's no point in arguing. <laughs> but have you written them a letter? Have I written a letter? No. Must be an echo in here. Have you written a letter? Yeah, have I written a letter? No. No. Well, guess what? Is that what I need? To time do? to write the letter. And all you say it in essence is that. I purchased this property on whatever date it was. Uh -huh. your, your people, I understand that the previous owner used your service. Your people solicited both me and my husband, and we declined the service. Clearly, we have no obligation to your folks. In the event that you did provide a service, you did so at your own, with your own error and your own risk, and that we consider it gratuitous. Very truly yours. Hmm. That's it. No more. Okay, good enough. There's no reason for you to pay for that. I mean, that's just a mistake they're going to have to eat. Happens all the time in business. Swallow hard. Got it? Okay. Okay, kid. Okay, I wish, thanks. I wish you well. I'm Bruce Williams. Stick around. This is talk. I don't know that. First of all, license for what and where? Okay. It's uh... a, li a license in the middle of, of nowhere, Alaska. <laughs> has no value, whatever. Right. Or very little value. There, there are little radio stations that serve 500 people up there, and they're, I'm sure they're fine, fine people and all that. But the value state, the value of the station is almost non-existent. Okay. This particular company, Bruce, uh, guaranteed no uh, license would be issued for a population less than 500,000, mm -hmm. and it's for a particular paging frequency. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, there's a. A lawsuit that was just filed, I, forget, I, I do know where it's matter, I'm not going to tell you, about, against a talk show host. Second lawsuit against this guy <laughs> for, for saying this is a great investment. You never heard me say that stuff, did you? No. You never heard me do a commercial for that stuff, have you? And I've been asked. Not by the hair of your chinny chin chin. I'm a little annoyed with Jane Pauley's group. You know Jane Pauley's show? Because mm -hmm. one of the producers called. And we we respond to we don't usually respond to those things because they're going to do a show on on some of the bad guys or at least alleged bad guys guys who've been accused right right and I said don't you think it would be well to include some people in our because this hurts our business has to hurt our business if 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 anybody if a cop goes crooked it hurts all the cops right right if if what do you do for a living I'm a salesman what do you sell industrial products okay well if some guy comes ahead of you and sells him a carload of crap. That makes it very hard for you to sell them, doesn't it, the next time? Yes, it does. So everybody gets tarred by the brush. And I, and I said to this producer, who has yet to call me back, um, uh, and if you, somebody, a couple of you guys might want to call the Jane Pauly show and ask him what's going on, I said, why not have one of the guys who's... I've been in this business longer than anybody else on the air right now. And I've never been sued. Never been th seriously threatened with a lawsuit. Because I'm very careful about those products that I do commercials for, and clearly very careful for those that I endorse.
And in all honesty, Bruce, that's why I called you. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, I, well, I, I, I used to listen let, to you all the time, and unfortunately, I can't get you in Victoria, Texas, but I still remember the telephone number. Well, I'm delighted. And I took a chance, first time caller, and I got through. Well, I'm very happy. We can't, where, where is Victoria? It's between Houston and Corpus Christi. Hmm. Well, we're, we're on in Houston, and I think we're on in Corpus. I can't tell you where. But you hang on a minute. Maybe Danny can give you stakes that's close enough where you might be able to grab us. Super. I do wish you well, my friend. Thank you, Bruce. Hang on to your wallet. I'm Bruce Williams. This is TalkNet. Let's try Melbourne, Florida. Hello there. Hello. Hi. This is Anita. Yes, Anita. And I uh, enjoyed your program last evening, but I was very disturbed uh, by what the young lady uh, that was on that talked about a training program for a medical assistant that would cost $12,000. Well, she's 11000 but that's or okay. That's, well, that shook me up. <laughs> um, my background is uh, I am uh, a uh, academic advisor. Mm -hmm. uh, I have all the degrees from New York, so on and so forth. Um, my... Um, <laughs> what do I say? My warning to her. My no, warning well, to on, her. Let, let, hold, take a deep breath. Let me recap, because there may be one or two people that might not have heard that conversation. Lady right. called up, and she was uh, from um, Florida, remember? Yes, Lutz, Lutz, Florida, matter of fact. A mil <laughs> military wife in the late 30s, and she was thinking about taking an 18-month course for 11 grand to become a medical tech, not a technician, but a records keeper, that sort of thing. Right? Yes. Okay, medical your turn. Assistant. Your turn. Uh... And, uh, well, first I would ask her, you know, what are the credentials of the school? Because the fee seems excessive. Uh, and does the school provide job placement? How are the graduates eval evaluated by the professionals in that field? You know, would they want to hire these graduates? And uh, are these credits that she's earned, uh, you know, recognized by any other school if she wanted to go for her education? No, it's a trade school. I'm it's a trade simple. school. All right. There are no I, credits uh, as such. I looked at our community college here in uh, Melbourne, mm -hmm. part of the state system, mm -hmm. and I would strongly encourage her to look at the catalog, go and see what they have. They, in this school, and I think it must be pretty much the same throughout the system, they have two tracks in the medical field. You can go into a degree program, uh, an RN in nursing, mm -hmm. uh, that would take you two years. Or you can go into a certificate program and receive specialized training in several related field, uh, mm, fields. Sure. And uh, well, they're, they're a lot the cost of is very reasonable. It's just a few hundred dollars, the nursing assistant, patient care assistant. Right. There, there are many options, and certainly and community colleges are, are right at the head of the list when uh, economies are, are, are of some interest because they are generally, not always, but generally governmentally supported, and they're very reasonable. And certainly being a... Um, wife of the service, then I, you know, I would think their funds are rather limited. You would think so. Well, listen, yeah. thank you very much, dear. You I appreciate very it. very welcome. Take good care. Thank you. Bye-bye. <clears throat> we go on now to Poe Kipsy. Hello there. Hello. Hey, baby. How are you? I am fine, thank you. Can you tell me an easy way to remove contact paper from wooden shelves <laughs> that are in cabinets? What is this, Happy Halloween's here? <laughs> it's, well, you seem to know everything about building and restoring. Well, Ma'am, if, if the contact paper was put on right, I don't know any easy way to get it off. Oh. Well, no, there are some air bubbles. It's easy when, when there are air bubbles. Mm -hmm. But uh, the rest of it, you know, just comes off in tiny pieces. That's right. Well, that's the idea. It is supposed to bond. Well, but you can't keep contact paper on forever. No, but it's meant to bond. Now, I, I suspect that it can be sanded off. Oh, no, that's work. Well, well, not with a power sander, it would be all oh. much work. Uh, I don't know if it responds to, to heat. I was going to say, can you use it? Well, let's, I haven't a clue. Let's see if we can find somebody who knows, okay? Okay. Well, we're going to put you... <laughs> boy, we're going to put you on hold just I'll... for a minute. If you know how to remove contact paper and I put that stuff down and it's lasted for a while contact paper how do you do it if there's an easy way or is there a way at all to take it off maybe there's an approved way to take it off number 703 413 8381 that's 703 413 8381 if you can help my friend in Poughkeepsie because I don't know how to do it I think that you can, I mean, I remember ripping this stuff off and it had to let go, and it just let go. 
But if, when sometimes if it's really bonded, you've got yourself a serious problem. But there may be an approved way. Maybe you get the edge up and hit it with steam or something. I don't know. 703-413-8381. Remember, we're going to be here this evening from 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll take your calls off the air for broadcast at a future date. Okay, we'll put our friend uh, in Poughkeepsie on hold. Oh, son of a gun. That was quick. We've got a guy in, or a suggestion, I'm not sure the gender, from a cellular in Boise, Idaho. Hello there. Hi. Hi. Uh, I would bet she would have no problem if she took out a uh, hair dryer yeah. and got it warm. And in essence, what she's doing is she's melting the glue backing behind the contact paper and i would bet at that point she could peel it off like peeling an orange is that right yeah just take turn the turn the uh the glue back into a liquid in other words. yeah that's exactly right get start it real warm one. and then uh start on one corner and get that real soft and then just work your way across the uh, whole sheet of contact well paper. let me ask you this then how would an iron do well i would think a hair dryer would be a lot easier uh-huh and, you know, get like a thousand watt hair dryer. Even better than that is, uh, oh, some of these uh, floor covering people that put down vinyl floors and whatnot, if they are working with a, like a hard sheet vinyl and they have to soften it, they use a heat gun. Uh-huh. Uh, there's also... You can, you can go buy those heat guns at hardware stores and whatnot because obviously with some of those hair dryers, they've got a thermal uh, overload on them. But they overheat, right. they kick out. There's also a, a heat gun that you use to put on shrink when you're making gift baskets and that sort of thing. Yeah, I would bet. So like that. Well, I, 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 think if you, I think she'll be amazed at how easy it is at that point. Very well. Thank yeah. you so very much. Appreciate that. No problem. Poughkeepsie, I hope you were listening. Perhaps someone else will make a contribution as well. I well, was listening. Okay, let's try to stick around. We'll, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, dear. I, I don't have a hair dryer, and I don't have a heat gun. Well, maybe you can go borrow a hair dryer, oh, for pity's sake. Would, um, you know, one of these um, defrosting um, gadgets that you use for, uh, for the uh, refrigerator? For the old-fashioned refrigerator, you mean? Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a heat gun, too. But i got to believe that there's somebody of your acquaintances that uses a hair dryer. Hang on a minute now. Oh, okay. Well, Blackfoot, Idaho. Hello there. Hi, how you doing? I'm all yeah, right. Definitely a good idea, but uh, once you get it, get it up, you still got that glue stuck down. Uh, some, of, some of the things I use uh, to get tape off of copier cabinets and stuff like that are some, uh, oh, some solvent-based uh, uh -huh. fluids. And that gets the rest of the glue off, too. Hmm. Once you, uh, I mean, how would you, how would you get it behind the, uh, the, the material? Just kind of pour it on there and kind of peel it back, and as it peels back, it exposes more material? Well, I suppose it depends on what kind of a solvent you're using. It'll probably even just dissolve the, uh, the vinyl or, uh, soften it up to where you just scrape it off. Huh. There's a thought. Yeah, thank you very much, my friend. You're welcome, sir. All righty. Danny, we got anybody else who wants to make a suggestion? All righty. Well, Poughkeepsie, there's a couple of ideas. I hope they work well for you. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. Fort Dodge, hello there. Welcome to my world. Hello, Bruce. Hi, baby. I'd like to ask a question. My husband and I started the business about two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. I do calligraphy, and along with that, I incorporate um, real press flowers. And I do mostly inspirational things, but I do other quotes as well. And we've done some uh, advertising. I've done a little selling through retail. I've done home shows. And initially, we did a catalog where we did some mail order. But I'm wanting to know how to expand so that we can... Well, how have, you mentioned a whole menu of, of uh, attempts that you made. Mm -hmm. How they worked out. Which ones have worked and at what cost? Well, the one that worked the best seemed to be the home shows where I go into the homes and do shows there. That has worked real well. Well, how did you get the leads for those shows? Well, just by friends and acquaintances that I well, know. Well, but do, when you go to a home show, do you ask the people there to run a party for you? I hadn't been, no. Well, that's what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, it dies. You run yeah. out of friends. Yeah. But what you do is you say, all right, ladies, or I assume it's mostly women that come to these things. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'd like to do one of these with your circle of friends, and of course you have to give them something for, for doing that. Yeah, I've been giving them like half off of what they want to order. Okay, well, but if you can do that, that's all you have to do, boys. That's a break. Yeah, right. Usually, got to give them something outright. Mm -hmm. But the point is, if something works, you do it. 
Now, if you want to look, you have to try other means of advertising, whether it's print, whether it's radio, whether it's flyers, whether it's falling out of helicopters. You've got to try different things. Oh, I was wondering what you would think about doing a trade show. I try everything. Sure, I go to a trade show. Mm-hmm. You've got to get there's, there's There's no magic bullet. And in advertising, you have to try different approaches, and what works, works, and what doesn't, you reject. I'm Bruce Williams for TalkNet. We had a caller who pointed out to our previous caller that solvents can cause trouble, fires and explosions, when not used correctly. So be sure and accept that caveat. Hey, Dennis, Dennis. <laughs> Boy, Denny and I are going to be here from 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. Eastern Time, logging your calls for broadcast at a future date. We are invited to join us at 800 743 8000. Okay, Seattle, hello there. Hello, Bruce, how are you? I am well, thank you. Um, I had purchased a car from a used dealership um, about four days ago. Mm-hmm. And while I was at work, I got a call from them, and they told me that the person who they had bought the car from, they said that the police had called him and told him that the title was stolen and the car was stolen, that this person had brought in that he had stolen it from his mother. Huh. Now, this this sounded a little strange to me, so I called my aunt, who works at the Department of Motor Vehicles, mm-hmm. and I asked her to run the license plate, and she did. Is, and, uh, let me ask you a question for those of us that are a little different environments. Does the license plate stay with the uh, the car in, in Washington State? Yes, it does. Okay, because it does not in many states, as you may know. Yeah, it stays with the car. And let me just mention something to our operations people. I'm getting echoes like crazy in my ears, so you guys might want to check something out here. Go ahead. Okay, so I had called her up and I got the uh, owner's name and number and I called her and it turns out her and her son had put the car on the lot on consignment for them to sell. Mm -hmm. The car wasn't selling, so the dealership offered to buy it from them for Mm $2,300. So they came in to get the money for the car Mm -hmm. and the dealership only wanted to pay them $1,800. How much did did you pay for this car? Uh, they were going to finance me for five thousand dollars. Five thousand? You agreed to pay? I didn't. Well, uh, I, I was. I'm only 21. I didn't There's have no any money to put down. I only had a car to trade in a, a '79 Honda Accord. What does I, that got to do with anything? Why would you pay five thousand dollars for a twenty-five hundred dollar car? I didn't know that's how much it was worth. It was an '85 Mazda 626 four door. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize how little it was worth. I was thinking I was just lucky to be able to get a car that they were willing to finance in-house. Boy, oh boy. So, these uh, outfits, you know, pay here, buy here, whatever. In what? Barry, the, these companies that you say, pay, they say pay here, buy here, that kind of, invariably cater to people like you. Uh-huh. Which means they, they buy inexpensive cars, sell them at Broadway prices, charge a lot of interest, get screwed regularly, but they will come out ahead in the long run. Uh, no, that's what I found out after the fact. But you, you didn't know that? No, I, I didn't know that. What happened was is when the lady came in to get her money for the car, yeah. they only wanted to pay her 1800 So they, So she said, well, give me the car back. Well, they sold it to me before they purchased it from her. For five grand? For five grand. And Oof. well, I was I, I didn't I only put down my car. I was going to be paying right. payments. Let's, go, let's cut to the chase. Are they willing to give you your money back and void the deal? Yes, but I'm wondering... No, uh, but I'm wondering nothing. Get back, before they change their mind, get back and kill the deal. So they can't get you in trouble for what they did? Cause they I don't mind. care about... Look, who cares about them getting in trouble? You got screwed royally. Uh-huh. Now you got a chance to get out of the deal, right? Yes. Get out of it. Okay. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Because okay. it's exactly what it is. You, were, you did something really dumb. Uh-huh. Really, you did. I mean, at 21, I can call you dumb. It's all right. When I was 21, and I'm still older than you, I'm still doing dumb things. But you did something really stupid. You didn't, you didn't check on what a car was worth before you signed a contract. Mm-hmm. That's stupid. Mm-hmm. No other way to just... Is there any other adjective that works? No. There okay. Is. okay. Now... I'm desperate to get a car. Well, but you shouldn't be that desperate. Why are you that desperate? Did you screw up your credit some way? Um, well, I had no established credit, so... It's not screwed up badly? No. Well, in that case, you can do better than that. But the point is, there will be, they have to get the car back because these. I don't know why they won't pay her twenty three hundred when they agree to pay you five. You agreed to pay five. That's another story. Get out and get the deal killed before they change their mind. Okay. So just don't say anything about me. Keep your mouth shut. What do you care? What do you? What do you possibly care? 
just so that they, I, I mean, could I report it someplace so they don't do it? To hey, afterwards, if you want, what are you kidding me? You think that's going to that's going to help anything? Okay. Right now, you know who Don Quixote was? No. Well, I, I give, I'm going to give you a, an assignment. Go to the library. Okay. Look up a guy named Cervantes, and he wrote about a, a, a fictional character called Don Quixote. Okay. And uh, you owe me this because I'm going to I'm getting you out of something here, right? Okay. Yes. Don't be a Don Quixote. Okay. You'll get will be you'll, you'll remember a lot longer if you go look it up. So just go get the money back. And, Absolutely. Uh, get on your horse. Leave right now. You're calling from Seattle, right? Yes. It's only, it's, four, it's, uh, it's only 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Get, get down there now. Get the money and go. Okay. Okay, kid. Thank you. You're very welcome. Bye-bye. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Five grand for a $2,500 piece who, who they're only, they don't even want to pay 1800 for. If they could get for 2300 he gets a way to get out. Grab it and go. All right, where are we going now, Danny, from Seattle? Louisville, Kentucky. I can't remember I'm writing here. Hello there. Good evening, Bruce. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Uh, first, I want to preface by saying I'm calling you with my future daughter-in-law's permission. Okay. I haven't stuck my nose in where it doesn't belong. Well, maybe I have, but she accepted it. <laughs> She's letting you stick it in, huh? Yeah. Uh, uh, my son and, and uh, his fiance plan to get married about this time next year just before Christmas mm -hmm. uh, which is wonderful they've been living together now for a year which is their way of doing it <laughs> I, uh, I, I see you didn't endorse that well I didn't have a choice in the matter so <laughs> no, but nonetheless the way you put it was their way of doing it well, that's right uh, my son is self-employed uh, owns his own home he and, he and the bank are owning his own home and uh, this young woman, who, uh, who's a real sweetie, has uh, two children, both by separate husbands, previous husbands, obviously, mm -hmm. and uh, has incurred some uh, substantial debt on legal fees from the divorce and student loans for college. Uh, she's got about three, three and a half years of college under her belt, mm -hmm. uh, no degree. How old is this girl? Uh, she's 26. Okay. And, 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 your, uh, and your son is how old? Uh, he's 26 as well. Mm -hmm. the, um, the circumstances of her debt, the bulk of it uh, is five grand on legal fees for these two divorces, which seemed like a whopping amount to me. Uh, be that as it may, it's, uh, I've seen the bill, so it's there. Uh, whether it's justified or not, I don't know. And a total of almost 10, uh, excuse me, almost 8K on the student loan. Mm -hmm. Uh she is employed full-time, mm -hmm. and obviously a full-time mom as well. Uh, mm -hmm. the, her employment is, uh, yields about 13 k a year. That's all. That's all, yeah. yeah. $6 and some change per hour. Is what does she do? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, her problem is, quite frankly, Bruce, on the 5 k she owes the attorney. She's been paying on this bill now for three and a half years, and it's as big now as when she started. And uh, we have written a letter to the attorney uh, requesting total time in charge is going to break down of both, uh, all fees. Well, she's probably paying more interest than she is principal. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, and that's perfectly proper. That, oh, yeah, man. If the man did the work and right. and, and the, other, the other side of this coin, and it might be the lawyer's doing it, might not, but uh, certainly uh, not to her uh, advantage is that uh, the first husband has skipped uh, your home state and not paying a penny. Has mm -hmm. nothing in his name, uh, lives with his mother. Mm -hmm. The second husband uh, lives in the general area of Lowell, the adjacent county over, mm -hmm. uh, does occasional jobs in the way of, uh, has his own business of a yard service, but uh, we all know what that is a trailer behind his car and maybe cuts a lawn or two and pays virtually nothing. Mm -hmm. His mom and dad, however, do make um, a fairly honest effort to cover the kids obligations and it's uh, interesting. yeah it's uh, of course that's not their responsibility and uh, this woman uh, young woman has a, a fairly good relationship with uh, the grandparents well, right it's there's it's there's still their grandchild that's right oh absolutely absolutely question comes down to this bruce uh, with the 13,000 in, in debt which is virtually insurmountable for this young woman to pay off at this time mm -hmm. um what direction and what course of action uh, would appear to be, uh, at least from the facts as I've expressed them, an appropriate course to take? Well, there's not. I don't think there's a whole lot of choices here. The eight thousand dollars is not dischargeable by bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. You're aware of that. 
No, it was not. Student loans are not dischargeable. Okay. Well, so, she ought to become an MD, then she doesn't have to pay him. Well, that's another problem. <laughs> <laughs> but in the meantime, they're not dischargeable, and she owes the money. Yeah. The only thing that she could discharge by bankruptcy is $5,000. In my opinion, that's not worth going bankrupt for. Now, we haven't talked about your son. How much is he earn? Uh, I don't know his total earnings, Bruce. Uh, I would I would guess my gut, uh, oh, he's self-employed, uh, I'd say somewhere in mid-30s to mid-40s. What's he have in the way of assets? Uh, well, he, he uh, I won't call him substantial, but he... Owns, cash. Uh, cash. Stocks, bonds. Um, yeah, what? he's got he's got stocks, uh, sixty to eighty thousand dollars worth. Well, the answer is have him pay off her debts. She's going to marry her. Yep, that's yep. the answer. Yep, and you can. I'm sure that the the uh, the, uh, the attorney's bill could be negotiated. Oh, absolutely, I'm for sure. cash. And I also, uh, she has talked with the student loan group, and they said that uh, they one it's two different loans. They said they can pull the one loan back in, put them under the same refinance at a lower rate. I don't know if that's... Do I'd really pay it off. Pay it off? Pay it off. If you're hurt, look, does he love this girl? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the next question is, uh, not the next question, the next circumstance is, uh, it's his opinion that uh, after the after the marriage, he'd like to adopt the two children. Well, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think it's so. Very nice it's very nice of him. And, yeah, it's, you know, that's the way it should be. Yeah. But the fact is, if he's got the assets, be easier to negotiate with the attorney and pay off the student. The student loans are not going to negotiate. Yeah. The attorneys he'll probably take twenty five hundred cash. Yeah, pay them off and start their life without all this aggravation. I think you're right. I think it's good to hear. I do wish you well, my friend. Thanks so much. Oh, by the way, Bruce. I've yeah, been, I've been chasing you around the the Dow on the different venues in Louisville since about two years before your crash. Boy, oh boy, that's yeah. a long time. Well, I, I I won't tell you that I'm the most loyal listener, but I've enjoyed every minute I've heard. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. You know, I was out again today, flying around the Gulf of Mexico. I really enjoy that airplane again. I, it's the one place that I can be totally relaxed. Yeah, I mean, you fly on an airplane, you can be relaxed. You, do what you, you pay attention, but nobody bugs me, I guess, is what it comes down to. That and I suppose, to a lesser degree, go out in the boat. But I don't, I'm not a real, I have a boat in my backyard here, but I'm not real big on the boat thing. But I sure do enjoy that flying. I'm Bruce Williams. This is TalkNet. Springfield, Missouri. Hello there. Hello. Hi. Well, I have an idea for the lady who has the contacts problem because I had a similar problem with uh, a boat that I had bought and had some contacts paper on the uh, the dash. What? Tell me about it. Well, uh, of course, once you get the contacts off, you have the glue left on there, and that's the big problem. Peanut butter. Just smear peanut butter on there, and the oil from the uh, in the peanut butter goes ahead and penetrates the the glue, softens it up, and then you just peel it off and that's all there is to it why, would it, why then wouldn't peanut oil itself be even instead of using well peanut yeah butter? peanut oil would work too but the, you know for example on bumper stickers where you you put oil on there it's going to go ahead and fall off but you put the put the uh put the peanut butter on the bumper sticker right and then it'll go ahead and and uh, peel off there and it sticks to it so oh, it, it comes off easy but it works <laughs> great i i left this on for one week on that boat dashboard mm -hmm. and it came off just like everything was gone well so we're going it sticks uh, to the roof of your I, mouth and sticks to the boat huh i had taken that uh, boat to some boat dealers and they tried all types of solvent including aircraft solvents and everything else it didn't work but the peanut butter did i'll be darned so, I don't thank know. you very much okay. for sharing i appreciate that all right fine bye bye dayton ohio hello there Hey, how you doing tonight, Brian? I'm doing real well, thank you. Great. Um, uh, I'm in a situation here where I don't know if I'm, uh, I really don't know about it. I'm looking for some direction. I'm not sure who to ask, so I thought I'd call the Wonder Man. Uh-oh. Uh, well, <clears throat> basically what I have is I've got a party that is interested in uh, starting a business, uh, very large, where they're looking for several million dollars. Uh, 